Hello everyone it's been a while. Today I'm bring you guys a brand new what if Naruto was sent to Yu-Gi-Oh GX universe. It starts when a dimensional rift opened in the valley of the end, Naruto was thrown into it by Sasuke, so that he couldn't get in the way the Uchiha's quest for revenge. This leads to the young Uzumaki landing in Domino City, where he is found by Yugi Muto and made into the King of Games student. Now a couple years later, Naruto decides to attend Duel Academy to make his mentor proud. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to follow my gaming channel link will be in the description and now on with the video. Today is the day. Thought a 15-year-old teen walking through Domino City, as they made their way to the Kaiba Dome. The teen had spiky blonde hair, lightly tanned skin, bright blue eyes, and three whisker marks on cheek. His attire consisted of black boots, dark blue jeans, a black studded belt with two deck cases attached, a black short-sleeved shirt, and a dark orange jacket, while strapped to his left arm was a Kaibacorp solid vision dual disc with a dark purple, almost back, body and silver accents. This was Naruto Uzumaki, though most people would recognize him as the student of the King of Games himself, Yugi Muto. Currently, Naruto was making his way to the Kaiba Dome to take the entrance exam to enroll into Duel Academy, a school created and owned by Sido Kaiba to teach new duelists and train them for the pro leagues. Naruto had planned to enroll when he was old enough, as well as planning to start in Slifer Red, the lowest rank at the academy, despite Kaiba having offered to place him in Obelisk Blue, given he knew Naruto was skilled enough to enter the Blue Dorm. But Naruto had rejected the offer not wanting people to believe he got in simply because of who he knew. If he got into Obelisk Blue, it'll be because he earned it through showing his skill in dueling. Plus, Kaiba had asked Naruto to investigate some strange things that have happened at Duel Academy. Things related to the more magical and darker side of dueling. Hey Naruto! Stopping in his tracks, Naruto looked to see who called him, before smiling and waving when he saw Yugi, himself, walking towards him. Hey Yugi. Naruto greeted, shaking his teacher's hand. I see you're on your way to the stadium for the entrance exam. Yugi said, recalling what day it was, along with running into that kid from earlier, who was also going to take the entrance exam. That's right, I got my decks all set and my dual disc. Replied Naruto, with Yugi nodding in approval and smiled, before putting a hand on his student's shoulder. That's something Yugi never thought he'd do, personally teach someone how to play dual monsters. But Naruto was a special kid, he knew the moment they met and Yugi was proud that he's grown to become a great duelist. It made him wonder if that was how Adam felt when Yugi defeated him in their duel, to see how far he's come and could now stand on his own. Good, just remember, always believe in yourself and your deck, if you do that, you'll never fear defeat. And remember, keep your abilities secret and only use them for emergencies. Yugi said seriously, knowing it'd be best if Naruto kept his powers secret unless he needed to use them. Right, I'll do my best. Naruto said nodding, which Yugi returned, before departing to allow Naruto to get to the Kaiba Dome. Hard to believe I've already been in this world for three years. Naruto thought, with his mind drifting to when he first arrived in this world. Flashback. Naruto groaned as his eyes slowly opened, before immediately closing them when bright light flooded his visions. Ugh, what hit me? Naruto thought as his entire body felt sore and like he just went ten rounds with Gamabunta. Opening his eyes slowly, to get used to the light, Naruto took in his surroundings and frowned when he didn't recognize the room that he was in. It wasn't a white hospital room nor his apartment. He didn't know where he was. Trying to sit up proved to be a mistake, as he felt a flare of pain his chest. Looking, Naruto saw a fist-sized scar near his heart, and that's when all the memories came flooding back to him. Learning Sasuke went rogue and planned to join Orochimaru. Him, Shikamaru, Niji, Choji, and Kiba going after him and facing the Sound 4. That weird bone guy and Lee showing up, then facing Sasuke at the Valley of the End. After that, everything kind of blurred together, with Naruto remembering that he used the Kyubi's chakra, 
while Sasuke turned into some bad demon thing, with creepy hand-like wings, then both of them using the Raisingan and Chidori. The next thing Naruto knew, he heard a loud crack behind him and looked to see a large tear just floating the air behind him, then he felt Sasuke kick him into the tear. After that, Naruto didn't remember anything. Though before he could think more on this, Naruto's attention went to the door as it opened and in walked a teenager, a couple years older than Naruto, and having possibly the strangest hair Naruto's ever seen, with it being blonde, black, and magenta. Oh good, you're awake. The teen said, smiling in relief. Uh yeah. Where am I? What village am I in? Naruto asked, the teen raising a brow in confusion. Village? I don't know anything about a village, but this is Domino City. Specifically, this is my grandpa's game shop. By the way, I'm Yugi Muto. Yugi introduced, only to be confused when Naruto didn't react to his name or even seeing him. While Yugi wasn't arrogant, he knew practically everyone knew who he was. If not by his appearance, then definitely they knew his name. To see this kid not react at all, confused Yugi. Well nice to meet you, Yugi, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto introduced. Likewise Naruto. Now if you don't mind me asking, what exactly happened to put you in the condition I found you in? Cause I found you unconscious in an alley, covered in a blood, and a giant hole in your chest, that's now gone. Yugi said. When he first found Naruto, he had been horrified and thought he was dead, given the amount of blood and the hole in his chest. But to Yugi's shock, he was somehow still alive and even more shocking. All his wounds were slowly healing and by the time he brought him back to the game shop, he was perfectly healed. It confused the king of games, as despite all his adventures and everything he's seen, he's never seen something like this. It makes him wish he could talk with the pharaoh and see if he knew anything. Uh, before I tell you that, could tell me where we are in the elemental nations? Naruto asked, given he's never heard of a place called Domino City, and had a worrying thought of where he was. Elemental nations? Sorry, I've never heard of them. Yugi said, shaking his head. What about the Kanahagakur? The land of fire? Sanagakur? The land of wind? Naruto asked, with Yugi shaking his head in the negative to each location. Kami damn it. Sasuke, you bastard. Naruto mentally cursed, realizing Sasuke had sent him to an entirely different world. Sighing in resignation, Naruto turned to Yugi and began telling him a summarized version of what happened, not wanting to go into too much detail, in case he didn't believe him and thought he was crazy. I believe you. Yugi said, after Naruto finished telling him what happened. Though when he heard about this Sasuke kid, Yugi was angry and disgusted by his actions. While he can understand a desire to avenge his family, and that it was horrifying that his family was killed by his own brother. The fact that he was going to someone like this Orochimaru, who made even the likes of Darts and Yami Merrick seem like heroes, was sickening. His attitude though, did remind Yugi a little of his rival, Kaiba, only much darker and revenge-driven. Actually, on second thought. Kaiba was much worse at first. Yugi thought with a deadpan expression, while remembering how Kaiba was before Adam defeated him at the Death Tea and banished the evil in him to the Shadow Realm. You, you do? Why? Naruto asked, surprised that Yugi believed him. While he was relieved, Naruto had to wonder why Yugi believed him, given if Naruto himself heard a story like his, he'd think the person was crazy. Let's just say, I've had my fair share of experiencing the impossible. Yugi said smirking. The Millennium Items, Duelist Kingdom, Battle City, the Virtual World, the Wicked God Cards, Darts and the Great Dragon Leviathan, going to the past and dueling Adam, and of course dueling Igami and meeting the Pharaoh one last time. Not to mention, if Kaiba was telling the truth, he literally created a way to travel to the afterlife so he could duel Adam. But somehow, that doesn't surprise me. Yugi thought with a deadpan expression. Kaiba was nothing, if not stubborn, 
and always found a way to screw the rules, as he always says. Well, given you don't know anything about this world, if you want Naruto, I could teach about it to be better blend in. Yugi offered. Really? Just like that? Naruto asked, surprised at the offer. Just like that. Repeated Yugi, nodding, since he couldn't just leave him to wander around a world, he knew nothing about. Okay, yeah that'd be great. Thank you, Yugi. Naruto replied. Great. I'll let you rest and then we can get started. And while we're at it, I think there's a game you'd like to learn about. Yugi said smirking. A game? Asked Naruto confused. It's a favorite of mine and my friends. It's called, Duel Monsters. End flashback. Since then, Yugi kept good on his promise and taught Naruto everything he'd need to know about Earth, along teaching him how to play Duel Monsters. For Naruto, it was a really fun game and he was able to get it down surprisingly quickly. He built two decks, one was an elemental hero slash masked hero deck, with the elemental heroes coming from an older and less popular set, with two of his cards even being one of a kind. His other deck was a dark attribute deck, with it being filled with dark counterpart monsters, more cards from an old and not too popular set and while also having some one of a kind cards. While the cards might not be popular as their more common counterparts, Naruto really liked his decks and the dual spirits felt the same. That had been a surprise for Naruto, learning he could see dual spirits, but it only helped to better communicate with his monsters. He was also working on several other decks, as Naruto wanted to make sure he had different decks to choose from, but his hero and dark decks were the only completed ones. Yugi had also introduced Naruto his friends, Joey, Tristan, T, Bakura, Sido Kaiba and his little brother Makuba, Merrick, Ishizu, Odeon, as well as the creator of Duel Monsters himself, Maximilian Pegasus. They were all really great people to meet, and very welcoming too. Though the only ones who knew about his powers and that he was from a different world were Yugi, Kaiba, Pegasus and the Ishtar siblings. Given that next to Yugi, they were the most knowledgeable about supernatural and magical happenings. Naruto had also become a powerful duelist, even taken part in a few small tournaments, while even been able to beat Joey and Pegasus in duels. He even managed to, eventually, defeat Yugi and Kaiba in duels. But only once, and after a lot of time practicing and studying up on their past matches and decks. Even then, they were close duels with Naruto only winning through the luck of the draw. When he managed to beat Yugi, the King of Games had even given him a card, both as a reward for the victory and something told Yugi that it belonged with Naruto. The card being none other than the Dark Magician Girl, one of Yugi Sei's cards, right behind the Dark Magician. It had been a shock to receive the card, but Naruto was thankful to have Dark Magician Girl at his side, in more ways than one. Shaking those thoughts, Naruto saw he's arrived at the Kaiba Dome and entered, going up to the receptionist. If you're here for the entrance exam, I'm afraid all examinees are present, and we are no longer accepting any more entries. The woman said, looking at her computer, with Naruto smiling since he knew was on the list. Someone should have called and said I'd be going last, my name's Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto said, with the woman looking up in surprise. Oh oh. Of course, forgive me Mr. Uzumaki. Yes. Your match is scheduled to take place after everyone else's. Please, go on through. The woman said, given the person in question was Kaiba, himself. He specifically requested Naruto's entrance match take place last, as to not overshadow any of the other participants. With Naruto also asking to duel the strongest teacher of the academy, with their personal deck rather than a test deck. Nodding, Naruto entered the stadium and saw dozens of students in seats, as well as numerous examinees. Looking at the dual fields, Naruto saw only one match was taking place. Huh, must have been a late entry. Naruto thought, while seeing the kid was also using elemental heroes, but the more well-known ones, rather than the less known ones that Naruto uses. The guy he was facing was using an ancient gear deck, 
given the fact he ancient gear golem on the field. Though given the kid had skyscraper activated and had flame wingman out on the field, Naruto already knew the kid won thanks to wingman's special ability. He's going to win. Naruto stated, getting the attention of two other examinees, a short blue-haired kid and a black-haired teen, the latter of whom looking at him with wide eyes. What do you mean? Jaden's flame wingman isn't strong enough to destroy ancient gear golem. The kid, Cyrus, said, with Naruto nodding in agreement. True, but with Skyscraper out, all elemental heroes gain an extra thousand ATK points during damage calculation, as long as their ATK points are lower than their targets. And given Flame Wingman's special ability, Naruto trailed off. Then that means Jaden has won. Impressive deduction, I'd expect nothing else from the King of Game student said the teen, Bastion, having recognized who Naruto was. Cyrus looked at Naruto with wide eyes, now recognizing him, given nearly everyone knew Yugi Muto had taken on a student and seen him enter a few tournaments. And here he was right now. Yeah, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, nice to meet you. Naruto said, holding out his hand. Bastion Misawa, I take you are also entering the academy? Bastion asked, since if that was true, he'll have to update his decks and review all of Naruto's past duel in order to create a strategy to challenge him. S. Cyrus Truesdale. Cyrus introduced. Nice to meet you both, and yeah, I'm entering the academy. In fact, my match was set to go last. Naruto said. And that's game. Looking back to the duel field, they saw Jaden had indeed won his match. Naruto Uzumaki, please make your way to Duel Field 4. Hearing the call, Naruto waved to Bastion and Cyrus, while his enhanced hearing could pick up some of the chatter about him. Some of the people recognized his name and knew who he was, while others didn't, but he didn't focus on that and simply made his way down to the arena. Meanwhile, two obelisk blue students looked as Naruto made his way to the arena. The first was a beautiful girl with long dark blonde hair hazel eyes, and wearing the standard obelisk blue girl's uniform. This was Alexis Rhodes, the top female student at Duel Academy. Are you kidding, another late applicant? And they're facing Growler with his personal deck. That Jaden kid might have gotten lucky, but I don't think this Naruto guy will have better luck. Alexis said, while her companion scoffed. Her companion being an older student, with shoulder-length dark blue hair, dark blue eyes, and wearing the obelisk blue boy's uniform with the coat being white with blue accents. This was Zane Truesdale, the top duelist at Duel Academy. Don't be so quick to judge Alexis. Naruto Uzumaki was trained by the king of games, himself, along with Sido Kaiba, not to mention he's managed to defeat Joey Wheeler and his red ice black dragon. Zane said, Having kept up on all pro duelists and while Naruto wasn't a pro himself, he's in the same league as them. Wait, that's the same Naruto Uzumaki? Alexis asked surprised, with Zane nodding. Yeah and if we're lucky, Growler will actually bring out his legendary card this time. Zane said, since he was disappointed that Growler didn't bring it out against Jaden. What do you mean? He already summoned ancient gear golem. Alexis reminded, only for Zane to shake his head. No, he has another monster, even stronger than his golem. Perhaps against Naruto Uzumaki, he'll bring it out. Zane said. Meanwhile, Naruto entered the dual field, while attaching the head piece of his dual disc, before inserting his dark deck. He was originally going to use his hero deck, but after Jaden showed he used heroes as well, Naruto decided to use his dark deck rather than just seeming like he was copying another duelist. He was also sure that the teacher that he'd be facing was going to be tough, especially if they used an ancient gear deck. But when Naruto saw the teacher, he was facing he couldn't help but sweat drop. Is that guy or a girl? Naruto wondered, seeing the professor with a dual vest and honestly couldn't tell, what they were. You're my opponent? Naruto asked, wanting to make sure he entered the right field. I am. I am Dr. Velian Growler, 
Mr. Uzumaki. I must say, it was a surprise Sido Kaiba called to personally schedule your match. Then again, I suppose it'd be bad for the King of Games student to overshadow the other test takers. Growler said, with Naruto shrugging. I didn't really care when my match was, I only asked to duel the strongest teacher the academy had. Naruto said, with Growler smirking at his words. And naturally, you requested to duel me. Very wise at recognizing a top duelist. But be warned, I will not go easy on Dash. I've actually never heard of you. Naruto cut in, with Growler's jaw dropping and his eyes wide widening at his audacity. WHWH what, how dare you? Never heard of me, I am Dr. Velian Growler, head of the Obelisk Blue Dorm, I have a PhD in Do Dash. Who cares about who are you, or some paper you have? In fact, your new name is Midboss. Naruto declared, already not liking this guy's attitude and decided to knock him down a couple pegs. The entire arena fell silent at the declaration, with it being broken when someone started laughing. This caused everyone to start laughing at the name Naruto just gave Growler. Even Bastion chuckled a little, despite himself. Ah ha ha ha. Oh man, I don't who he is, but this guy's awesome. Jaden laughed. Wow, that's a uh, one way to get Growler to shut up. Alexis said giggling, never expecting to see someone call Growler mid-boss. Even Zane found it funny but managed to stifle his laughs and simply smirk at what he knew was likely going to become Growler's new nickname. Mimi mid-boss. Growler shouted, while Naruto nodded with a wide smile on his face. Yeah, it's perfect. I'm sure you're a strong duelist, but you're also not the strongest, you're basically a stepping stone. So, mid-boss. Naruto said, getting more laughter from everyone, while Growler turned red in embarrassment. That is unacceptable. Prepare yourself, you brat. Because now I will show you the power of my deck. Growler said, now intent to put this upstart brat in his place. Fine by me, mid-boss. Said Naruto, smirking, while activating his dual disc. Let's duel. Naruto, 4000. Growler, 4000. I'll start things off. First, I activate the spell card. Ancient Gear Castle. Growler said as a large ancient castle appeared behind him. Ancient Gear Castle. Card type, continuous spell. Effect, all ancient gear monsters gain 300 ATK. Each time a monsters is normal summoned or set, place one counter on this card. If you tribute summon an ancient gear monster, you can substitute this card for a tributes, if the number of counters is equal to or greater than the number of required tributes. Now I'll summon my ancient gear soldier in ATK mode. Said Growler, summoning his monster to the field. Ancient gear soldier. Attribute, Earth. Level, 4, card type, effect monster. Monster type, machine. Effect, if this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell slash trap cards until the end of the damage step. ATK slash 1300 def slash 1300. And thanks to the effect of my ancient gear castle, my soldier gains 300 ATK points and my castle gains one counter. Ancient gear soldier, ATK slash 1300 def slash 1300, ATK slash 1600 def slash 1300. Ancient gear castle, counters, one, next I'll put one card face down and end my turn. Your move Uzumaki. Growler said smirking. Alright, my turn. Draw, said Naruto, drawing a card and putting it in his hand. First, I'll use the effect of Dark Greffer, by discarding a level 5 or higher Dark Monster, I can special summon him from my hand to field. Now rise Dark Greffer. Naruto said, sending Dark General Freed to the graveyard and summoning Dark Greffer to the field in ATK mode. Dark Greffer. Attribute, Dark. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. 
Effect, you can special summon this card, from your hand, by discarding one level 5 or higher dark monster. Once per turn, you can discard one dark monster. Send one dark monster from your deck to the GY. ATK slash 1700 def slash 1600. Now I'll use Dark Greffer's other effect, by discarding another dark monster, I can send one dark monster from my deck to the graveyard. Naruto said, sending Dark Simorg and Simorg of Darkness to the graveyard, as well. Humph, perhaps I overestimated your skills. You seem to forget you're supposed to keep monsters, not continuously throw them away. Growler stated, while Naruto simply smirked. Now I activate the card of demise, spell card. With it, I get to draw until I have five cards, at the cost of having to discard my entire hand after five of my turns. Card of demise. Card type, normal spell. Effect, draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. During your fifth standby phase after activation, send all cards in your hand to the graveyard. Drawing until he had five cards, Naruto smirked at what he drew. Now I'll activate the effect of Dark Nephthys from my hand. Because there are three dark monsters in graveyard, I can banish two of them and send Nephthys there. But next turn, I'll get to special summon him to the field. Naruto said, sending Dark Nephthys to graveyard, while banishing two of the monsters. Now I'll summon to the field, Doomsday Horror. Said Naruto, given he special summoned Dark Greffer, he still had a normal summon, as the Dark Fiend monster rose out of the shadows. Doomsday Horror. Attribute, Dark. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Fiend. Effect, this card's ATK and Def are equal to the number of banished Dark Monsters x300. If this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, Return all banished dark monsters to the graveyards. ATK slash. Def slash. You summoned a monster with no ATK points, congratulations. Growler stated, only to shiver when Naruto chuckled darkly, which was mirrored by Doomsday Horror. That'd be true, but thanks to Horror's ability, he gains 300 ATK and DEF points for every banished dark monster and right now, I have two. Naruto said, as Doomsday Horror's power grew. Doomsday Horror, ATK slash. Def slash. ATK slash 600 Def slash 600. Now Dark Greffer, attack his soldier. Naruto declared. Greffer charged forward and jumped up, swinging his sword with battle cry, before slashing straight through Ancient Gear Soldier, destroying it and inflicting damage on Growler. Growler. 4000 to 100 equals 3900. I activate the trap card, Damage Condenser. Growler said. Damage Condenser. Card type, Normal Trap. Effect, Activate only when you take battle damage. Special summon one monster from your deck with ATK equal to, or less than, the total battle damage you took this turn before activation. And with it, I'll summon my Ancient Gear in DEF mode said Growler, summoning the monster to the field. Ancient Gear. Attribute, Earth. Level, 2, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Machine. Effect, if you control an Ancient Gear, you can special summon this card, from your hand, in face-up attack position. ATK slash 100 def slash 800, and thanks to Ancient Gear Castle, it gains 300 ATK points. Ancient Gear, ATK slash 100 DEF slash 800, ATK slash 400 DEF slash 800. Doesn't matter, I activate Rush recklessly, increasing Doomsday Horror's attack by 700 for the rest of the turn. Now, send that gear to the scrapyard. Naruto said. Rush recklessly. Card type, Quick Play Spell. Effect, target one face-up monster on the field, it gains 700 ATK until the end of this turn. Doomsday Horror, ATK slash 600 DEF slash 600, ATK slash 1300 DEF slash 600. 
With a shriek, Doomsday Horror jumped towards Ancient Gear, bringing its claws down and slashing through it. But since it was in DEF mode, Growler's life points were safe. Now I end my turn with a face down, your move mid-boss. Naruto said, with Growler growling at the nickname. Doomsday Horror, ATK slash 1300 DEF slash 600, ATK slash 600 DEF slash 600. Drawl, said Growler, before smirking at the card he drew, along with the ones in his hand. Alright, first I'll use the effect of my ancient gear castle, by sacrificing this card and the counter on it, I can normal summon the ancient gear beast without tributes. Growler said, as his castle was destroyed, and he summoned his monster in its place. Ancient Gear Beast. Attribute, Earth. Level, 6, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Machine. Effect, This card cannot be special summoned. The effects of your opponent's monsters that this card destroys by battle are negated. If this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. ATK slash 2000 def slash 2000. Now, I activate the spell card Pot of Greed to draw two more cards. Pot of Greed. Card type, normal spell. Effect, draw two cards from your deck. With that done, Ancient Gear Beast attacks Doomsday Horror. Growler commanded. Not so fast I discard Kiribo, reducing all battle damage to zero. Said Naruto, discarding said monster, with a small group of Kiribos appearing around him, protecting Naruto from the battle damage. Kiribo. Attribute, Dark. Level, 1, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Fiend. Effect, During your opponent's turn, at damage calculation, you can discard this card, you take no battle damage from that battle, this is a quick effect. ATK slash 300 def slash 200. Humph. Very well you saved yourself this turn but next time you won't be so lucky. Growler said, annoyed that once again, his attack was rendered useless by a furball. I wouldn't be so sure, mid-boss. Since you destroyed Doomsday Horror, I can now activate my face down card, the crush card virus. Naruto said, much to Dr. Growler's horror. Crush Card Virus. Card Type, Normal Trap. Effect, Activate only when a dark monster with 1000 or less ATK is destroyed by battle from your side of the field. Your opponent destroys all monsters with 1500 ATK or more on their side of the field and in their hand and deck. Damage calculation is applied normally. Those monsters cannot be special summoned from the graveyard. If this card is not in your graveyard, negate this effect. Oh no! Growler exclaimed, as the virus was expelled from the trap card, infecting his ancient gear beast, as well as his hand and deck. The ancient gear beast let out a weak roar in agony as it began rusting, before collapsing into a pile of scrap metal. While Growler placed all monsters with 1500 or more ATK from his hand and deck to the graveyard. I I play one card face down, and he end my turn. Growler stuttered, knowing that he was pretty much in a no-win situation now, unless he can find a way to get that trap card out of Naruto's graveyard. My turn, draw. Said Naruto, drawing his card, along with activating Dark Nephthys ability. Now thanks to Dark Nephthys ability, I can now special summon him to the field. Come forth, Dark Nephthys. Naruto said as a circle of red and black appeared on the field, and from it rose the black phoenix, Dark Nephthys with a cry. Dark Nephthys. Attribute, Dark. Level, 8, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Winged Beast. Effect, If you have three or more dark monsters in your graveyard and this card in your hand, you can banish two of them from your graveyard, send this card from your hand to the graveyard. During your next standby phase after this card was sent to the graveyard by this effect, special summon this card from the graveyard. When this card is special summoned, target one spell slash trap card on the field, destroy that target. ATK slash 2400 def slash 1600. 
and because he was special summoned, Dark Nephthys' other ability activates, allowing him to destroy one spell or trap card on the field and you just happen to have one. Nephthys destroy his face down. Naruto commanded. With a cry, Dark Nephthys unleashed a fireball, destroying Growler's face down card. Now I'll activate my own pot of greed to draw two cards. Naruto said, drawing two cards and smirked at what he drew, knowing he just won the duel. Wh what were you smirking at over there? Growler demanded in fear, with Naruto looking up at him in response, while taking one of the cards from his hand. Oh nothing, just inevitable victory. But before that, I'm going to bring out a monster everyone knows, and I'm going to do it by activating the spell card, Dark Magic Veil. Naruto said, activating the spell card as a veil of darkness appeared on the field. Dark Magic Veil. Card Type, Normal Spell. Effect, Pay 1000 LP, Special Summon 1 Dark Spellcaster Type Monster from your hand or graveyard. By paying sacrificing a thousand life points, I get bring out one of my strongest monsters. I give you all, the Dark Magician Girl. Naruto said, much to everyone's shock. Naruto, 4000 to 1000 equals 3000. Wh what? Growler shouted at hearing the name of a card that only the King of Games owns. The Veil of Darkness soon pulled back and from it came the Dark Magician Girl, herself, in her trademark blue and pink robes and carrying her scepter. At seeing the famous and beautiful dual monster, everyone cheered, having never thought to see such a card in person. Dark Magician Girl waved, smiled and winked at the crowd, eliciting more cheers. Though she looked at Naruto and blew him a kiss, Growler, meanwhile, paled at seeing the legendary monster, alongside two others that are ready to attack him. Now then Dark Nephthys attack his life points directly. Naruto said. Dark Nephthys have a shriek as it unleashed a torrent of flames at Growler, causing him to cry in agony, while taking significant damage to his life points. Growler, 3900 to 2400 equals 1500. Now Dark Magician Girl, finish him with Dark Burning Attack. Naruto said. Wa well, wait, time out. How about we play a different game? Like rock, paper, scissors. Growler suggested, not wanting to be attacked by another strong monster. Okay, I choose rock, what do you choose? Naruto said. Um. Sorry rock beats, um. Now, attack Dark Magician Girl. Naruto declared. Waving her scepter, Dark Magician Girl launched a blast of magic at Growler, draining the last of his life points. Growler, 1500 to 2000 equals minus 500. Growler fell to the floor with swirls in his eyes, while Naruto's monsters vanished, with Dark Magician staying a moment longer to wink at Naruto. Everyone cheered at seeing not only the King of Games student in action, but also the Dark Magician girl as well. Wow, he's definitely the King of Games student. Alexis said in amazement, with Zane nodding in agreement, while smirking. Jaden Yuki and Naruto Uzumaki. Well, at least I know my last year will be interesting. Zane thought. Oh man, talk about a sweet duel. I can't wait for the chance to duel him. What do you think, Sai? Jaden asked, excited at the thought of dueling Naruto and seeing what other cards he has. Cyrus though was lost in his own world after seeing Dark Magician Girl being summoned. I will definitely need to work on my decks if I hope to beat him. Bastion thought. Naruto, meanwhile, looked at his deck with a smile. Thanks again for all your help, guys. Naruto thought as his cards glowing for a moment, before it faded. Drawing two specific cards, Naruto had been slightly disappointed he couldn't use his other ace cards, but at least he got to summon Dark Magician Girl. But something tells him, he'll have plenty of opportunities to summon his other aces during his time at Duel Academy. One thing for sure though, he can't wait to see who he'll get to duel next. Naruto exited the academy after having been fitted into his Slifer red uniform. Though he waved off receiving an academy-issued dual disc, 
preferring to stick with his solid light one instead. When he had gotten his first look at Duel Academy, he was amazed by the view and it only made him even more excited for when he gets the chance to duel some of the other students, something his decks shared, wanting to show their power also. Once all the helicopters and boats had arrived, all the new students were ushered into the academy, where Chancellor Shepard welcomed them all, before they were assigned to their dorms. Though as he exited the academy, Naruto caught sight of Bastion, Cyrus, and Jaden near the entrance. They seemed to be talking, but Naruto couldn't hear what they were saying, getting closer he was able to hear what they were saying. So what? Did you ever think that I was colorblind? Jaden questioned with an annoyed expression, making Bastion and Cyrus blink. Are you colorblind? Asked Naruto, while walking up to three and getting their attention. Aha, uh -huh, no. But I could have been. Hey, you're that guy you that dueled Growler after me. That was a sweet duel. Jaden said, giving Naruto a thumbs up, while Naruto gave a nod and a smile in return. Thanks, you did pretty good with your elemental heroes, as well. I've already met Bastion and Cyrus, but I don't think we've been introduced yet. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Replied Naruto, holding his hand out, which Jaden took and shook. I'm Jaden Yuki. Nice to meet ya. Jaden said with a grin. Before anything else could be said, Naruto and Jaden's decks began glowing, though only they could see it, and from them, Dark Magician Girl and Winged Kuribo appeared. Curry, Kuribo, Curry. Hey Winged Kuribo, good to see you again. I guess that Yugi found the right duelist to give you to, huh? Winged Kuribo nodded, before he began flying around, with Dark Magician Girl chasing after him. Naruto smiled as the two duel spirits played, while surprised to hear that Jaden met Yugi and received Winged Kuribo from him. But Naruto knew if Yugi gave Jaden that card, he was meant to have it. And looking Jaden, he saw that he was looking at the two spirits, also. So, he can see dual monster spirits as well. Naruto thought. Naruto was right, Jaden could see dual spirits and was surprised when both winged Kuribo and Dark Magician Girl appeared and started playing. Though he gained a solemn look when Dark Magician Girl flew over behind Naruto and wrapped her arms around his neck. It reminded him of a card he used to have. It was one of the first cards that he's ever had, but he had to send it away to help, her. Hey Jaden, are you alright? Cyrus asked, having seen his friend's expression, while Naruto and Bastion also took notice of the look on his face. Hmm, oh yeah, I'm good. Just a little bummed out, since we haven't learned when we'll get to start dueling. Jaden said, grinning in his usual joyful manner, with Cyrus and Bastion nodding in acceptance. Naruto, though, saw through Jaden's act and saw the mask he was wearing. Given he wore one for most of his life, he could tell when someone else was wearing one, as well. Though he didn't call him out on it, figuring it was a private matter and wasn't any of his business. By the way, Naruto how did you get the Dark Magician Girl? I thought only Yugi had that card. Saira said, having been eager to ask the question the moment Naruto summoned the famous spellcaster against Growler. Yeah, he did. But he gave her to me after I was finally able to defeat both him and Kaiba in a duel. Naruto revealed, much to the shock of the two Slifers and RA students. You, you beat Yugi Muto and Sido Kaiba? Bastion asked in amazement, while now feeling like any strategy he'd come with to challenge Naruto would be useless. This made Jaden even more excited to duel someone who's beaten two of the strongest duelists around. While Cyrus believed that Naruto could even rival his brother Zayn, after hearing this. Yeah, but don't think it was anything great. I had study up on all their past duels, their strategies, and all the cards in their decks, before I even considered challenging them. Even then, I only won by the luck of the draw. After that, I've lost all the other times I've dueled them. Naruto said, not wanting them to think he was better than Yugi or Kaiba, because he wasn't. He may have been able to beat them, but it was only once. 
with them having long since gotten stronger and adapted to both his decks. After all, Yugi and Kaiba never lose to the same opponent twice, as they always manage to adapt from their defeats and come out victorious in their rematches. The only opponents that they lose consistently to, is each other. Which is a given, with all the times they've dueled and memorized each other's strategies and cards. Naruto was just lucky that Yugi didn't have the god cards anymore, since he would have definitely lost then. Kaiba, though, had no such restrictions with using all of his different blue eyes white dragon cards. Still, the fact you managed to defeat those two, I'm surprised you aren't at least in RA yellow. Bastion said calmly, relieved at hearing Naruto's words, though he was still surprised, since someone of his skill should at the very least being in RA yellow, if not obelisk blue. Kaiba actually offered to put me straight in obelisk blue, but I turned it down. I wanted to start at the bottom and work my way up through the ranks. If I enter a different dorm, I want it to be because I earned it by proving it through dueling, and not because I was given the rank. Naruto said. That made the three nod, while feeling their respect for the blonde go up. Especially since he must have a very large shadow casted over him, due to being the student of the King of Games. Well, I must be off, it was pleasure meeting you, Naruto. Bastion said with a nod, which Naruto returned. See ya around the dorm, Bastion. Said Jaden, believing they'd all be in the same dorm. I wouldn't be too sure, your dorm is over there. Bastion stated, pointing towards where the Slifer Red Dorm was located. This made the three Slifers look to where their dorm is, before walking over to see what it looked like. Later. This isn't a dorm. It's like an outhouse with a deck. Cyrus complained, looking at the Slifer Dorm and seeing how small it was. Are you kidding? Check out the view this place has. Said Jaden, looking out over the ocean. Naruto simply chuckled sheepishly when he first saw the Red Dorm. While they may have become friends, or respective rivals, as Kaiba would never admit to being friends with Yugi, the Blue Eyes duelist still couldn't resist making a jab at the King of Games. Since Slifer was the god card that Yugi was most known for. Just like how Kaiba was most known for obelisk using, while Merrick was known for being the original owner of R.A., still, it has its own charm to it, and I'd take a simply dorm over some giant fancy mansion, any time. Naruto thought with a smile. After checking out the dorm a bit more, which wasn't much, the three headed to their rooms with Jaden and Cyrus sharing one, with Naruto's being at the end of the second floor. Knocking on the door. As his PDA said that he'll be roommates with another first-year student, and Naruto didn't want to just barge in. Just a minute. A voice said through the door. Waiting a little bit, Naruto heard some shuffling going on inside as he waited, before finally it was opened. The person inside was a short boy, wearing the standard Slifer red uniform, along with a large hat on their head. Seeing who his roommate was made Naruto sweat drop, as they seemed a little young to be at Duel Academy. Aren't you a little young to be attending Duel Academy? Naruto asked, much to the kid's annoyance. No, I'm not. I skipped a few grades and was able to enter early. Plus, I'll be twelve in a few months. Said the kid, crossing his arms with a huff. That made Naruto chuckle lightly, figuring the kid had to be a good duelist and really smart to have gotten in. Well, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, your new roommate. Naruto introduced, with the kid's eyes widening in shock and horror. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
but he'll make sure to keep an eye on him, just in case. Though they suddenly jumped in shock at hearing two loud screams, Naruto being able to recognize them as Jaden and Cyrus. What was that? Blair asked in shock, while also forgetting to disguise her voice. Thankfully, Naruto didn't notice as he ran towards Jaden and Cyrus's room, worried that something might have happened to them. Blair considered following him, since she was curious about source and reason of the screams, but decided it'd be a good opportunity to hide her more feminine stuff. Reaching the room, Naruto ran in. Hey, is everything alright? Naruto asked, while looking for any signs of a threat. Wah oh, sorry about that Naruto. Saira said sheepishly. Ehe, yeah sorry, we thought for a second that our roommate was a desk koala. Added Jaden, with Naruto sweat dropping at hearing the reason for their screams. Though looking at said the roommate, Naruto had to admit that he did look a little like a koala. Oh well, that's good. I thought something happened. Naruto said in relief. Well, it's all good. By the way, I'm Jaden Yuki. Jaden said to his and Cyrus's roommate. I'm Cyrus. Introduced Cyrus. Ugh, Chumley Huffington. Chumley said reluctantly, before looking at Naruto and his eyes widened in recognition. Hey, aren't you Naruto Uzumaki, the King of Games student? What are you doing in the Slifer Red dorm, wearing Slifer Red? Chumley asked, surprised to see the King of Games student wearing red. I asked to be put in the Slifer dorm. Naruto answered. This shocked Chumley, not only was Yugi Muto's student in Slifer Red, he asked to be put here. Uh, what's wrong with being Slifer? Cyrus asked, with Chumley scoffing as he looked up at the ceiling. You guys are clearly new, if you don't know how things work. The students here are divided into three groups, Obelisk Blue, RA Yellow, and Slifer Red. The Blues are the highest rank either because of their grades or their connections, while the yellows are the second highest, mostly students with lots of potential. Then there's us, the Red Wonders. Chumley explained. The Wonders? That's a cool name. Syra said, not seeing the problem, only for Chumley tell him why. As in, I wonder how flunkies like us ever got this far. Sorry to disappoint, but we're the bottom of the barrel. Well accept him, by all rights he should be yellow or blue. Chumley said, while pointing at Naruto. That's stupid. Naruto stated, getting their attention. What do you mean? Jaden asked. That the color of your jacket or what dorm you're in shouldn't determine your skills as a duelist. The only thing that should matter is believing in yourself and your deck. That's what really matters in a duel, not what grades you have or what connections you have. The only thing that stops a duelist from growing is not believing in themselves. What about you Chumley, do you believe in yourself? Naruto asked, before turning to continue getting settled in his room. Oh, and by the way, Jaden managed to the head of the obelisk dorm, and yet he's a slifer. Added Naruto as he exited the room. That made Chumley's eyes widened as he looked at Jaden and Cyrus, the former grinning and flashing a thumbs up, while the latter nodded. That revelation, combined with Naruto's words, got Chumley thinking. Later. After getting settled in their rooms, Naruto, Cyrus, and Jaden decided to go explore the rest of the academy, with Blair deciding to join them as well, since while she's still incredibly nervous about having a boy for a roommate, she didn't see the harm in getting to know them. They soon arrived at the yellow dorm, with Jaden whistling in amazement at it. Man, this place is huge. Jaden stated. It is quite impressive. Bastion said, walking up to them. Hey Bastion, did you already get settled in your room? Naruto asked, with Bastion nodding in confirmation. I did, I take it that you all have done the same. And who is this? Bastion asked, looking at Blair with a raised brow. Yeah, we're just checking out the rest of the school. And this is Blair, my roommate, he skipped a couple grades. Naruto said, seeing the look on the RA Yellow's face. 
Hm, not a bad idea. It's always a good thing to become familiar with new surroundings. Do mind if I join you? Bastion asked, with the others nodding, while telling him that he could. With that, the four slifers and one RA began exploring the school. Soon arriving at the obelisk dorm. There was also someone standing outside the dorm. Someone who made Cyrus gulp, given it was Zane. Catching sight of them, Zane zeroed in on Cyrus. Cyrus. Zane greeted tersely, with Cyrus giving a shaky wave. H. Hey Zane. Guys, this is Zane, my brother. Cyrus said nervously, something that made the four worried and confused at the tension that appeared, when the brothers greeted each other. I'm Naruto. Naruto introduced. I know who you are. You did very well in your duel against Growler. Zane said. He not only filled his field with powerful monsters, he was able to effectively destroy Growler's entire deck with Crush Card Virus. Along with the fact that he didn't lose a single life point, besides the ones he used to summon Dark Magician Girl, it actually made Zane eager to duel against Naruto. But knew that he'd have to play it smart, as he could use the Crush Card Virus on him, as well, to take out most of his deck. Given that most of Zane's monsters had more than 1,500 ATK points. Nodding, Naruto then noticed Blair looking at Zane with a blush on his face. Huh, that's interesting. Naruto thought, though he wasn't going to judge Blair, if he played for the other team. Zane also recognized Blair and mentally sighed. He knew she was a girl, but he wasn't going to reveal it, since it was her secret to tell or for the others to find out. Hey, what's that building over there? Jaden questioned, pointing to what looked like a second blue dorm across the lake. That's the obelisk blue girl's dorm. Answered Alexis, walking with her friends, Jasmine and Mindy. The three having been nearby when they saw the Slifers and RA students. They immediately recognized Naruto and Jaden, given the former was Yugi Muto's student, and the latter was able to beat Growler. They also recognized Bastion, since he was the number one student in the written portion of the entrance exam. Hey there, I'm Jaden Yuki. Jaden introduced, while Cyrus blushed when he saw Alexis, being instantly smitten with her beauty. We know who you are. Along Bastion Misawa, the number one student in the written portion of the entry exam, and Naruto Uzumaki, the King of Games student. You both beat, mid-boss. Alexis said with a light giggle at remembering Naruto calling Growler, mid-boss. Ahaha. Yeah, that was awesome, I kind of regret that I didn't think of it, myself. Jaden said, having believed that Growler was a mascot. Well, as much as we'd love to stick around girls, we're still getting familiar with the school grounds. So, until next time, see ya. Naruto said as they exchanged goodbyes with the girls and continued on their way. The next place they arrived at was the card shop, where they met Ms. Dorothy and Sadie manning the counter. Looking over the different booster packs, Naruto was surprised when he found certain booster packs. What did you find Naruto? Jaden asked as they walked over, only to be surprised as well at what they saw. Those are, first generation dual monster booster packs. Bastion said, surprised at seeing them here. First generation dual monster cards were among the first cards created for the game, before it became as popular as it is today, and before it was updated. Naruto remembered Yugi telling him that the last time these cards were used was when he dueled Kaiba at the Death Tea. After that, the game was updated with most of the cards of that era being banned. Only a few managed to be transitioned to the more modern dual monsters game, like Exodia, Dark Magician, Blue Eyes White Dragon, and Red Eyes Black Dragon for example. Duelist Kingdom and Battle City were the two events where the game was updated the most, with Duelist Kingdom being around the time when the transition occurred, while Battle City laid down the new rules for the game, that were now the standard. Though, while not all the cards from that era made it to the modern game, they were still sought after by collectors for how rare they now were. 
Seeing them, the five students decided to buy some booster packs, including a few of the first-generation ones. Though Bastion only bought a few, since he didn't want to throw off the strategies of his decks by adding too many different cards to them. They also talked with Sadie and Ms. Dorothy for a while, figuring they'll likely be coming here more often, and it'd be good to get to know the ones working here. After leaving the card shop, Bastion waved goodbye as he headed back to his dorm while the Slifers continued exploring. They continued to look around Main Academy building, and eventually found themselves in a state-of-the-art dueling arena. Wow, this has to be the sweetest dueling arena I've ever seen. Jaden commented. It looks state-of-the-art, real nice. Blair added in amazement. Naruto had to agree, it was a nice arena more streamlined than the classic one on Pegasus's island. I bet it'd be amazing to duel here. Cyrus stated. Well, why not find out? We're students here and this is our campus. Jaden said, eager for a duel. Wrong. This is the obelisk blue campus. Said an obelisk student, Taiyu. And you Slifer rejects aren't welcomed here. See the crest. Another obelisk, Rezu, said pointing to the crest of obelisk the tormentor above the entrance. So what? Are you going to make us leave? Naruto questioned, more than happy to duel these guys. Looking, the two obelisks' eyes widened as they now recognized who Naruto and Jaden were. Hey Chaz. It's those two duelists who beat Growler. Taiyu said, as a third obelisk, Chaz, revealed himself from the stands. Who's he? Jaden wondered. He's Chaz Princeton. He was the number one duelist at prep school. Taiyu said. Yeah, the future king of games, the best duelist there is. Added Reizu, with Naruto snorting at hearing this. Like that guy could ever beat Yugi. Naruto thought. Not to mention, that if he wanted to challenge Yugi, he'd first have to face Kaiba, as he'd never allow anyone, but himself, to take the title of King of Games from Yugi. Yeah, I don't think so. He can't be the future King of Games, because I'm going to be the King of Games. Jaden said. Hearing this, the two obelisks laughed. Ha. Huh. A slifer slacker as King of Games? Yeah right. Oh yeah, and what about me? I'm a slifer and I was trained by the king of games. Naruto retorted, making the two obelisks gulp, not wanting to go against Naruto. Shut it, both of you. Chaz said, getting everyone's attention. Maybe the slacker is right, he did manage to beat Growler and that legendary card of his. I suppose it takes some skill to pull it off, and Uzumaki was trained by Yugi himself. Or maybe they both just got lucky, how about we find out, right now? Chaz challenged, eager to both to defeat a slifer slacker and test himself against the king of games apprentice. Bring it, I'll go first. Said Jaden. Yeah, I don't think so. Alexis said, entering the arena and hearing what was going on. Hey Alexis. Are you here to watch me wipe the floor with my new friend, Jaden, here? It may be a short duel but it'll be entertaining. Chaz said, hoping to impress the Queen of Obelisk Blue. I'm here to remind you three about the Obelisk Welcome Dinner, which you're late for. Retorted Alexis, while crossing her arms under her bust. Oh yeah, let's go. Chaz said to his followers as they left. Sorry if Chaz rubbed you the wrong ways. I promise, not all Obelisk Blues are like that, he's just a jerk especially to the Slifers. Alexis said, with Naruto shrugging it off, having dealt with worse people than Chaz. No big deal. Though he was right about one thing, it would have been a short duel, I don't think I've ever beaten someone on my first turn. Naruto said smirking, making Alexis look at him with wide eyes, before laughing lightly. As entertaining as that'd be to see, you four should be going to. The Slifer welcoming dinner will start soon. Alexis said. Nodding, the four Slifers ran off, but Naruto stayed back a little. Hey, 
I don't think I caught your name earlier. Naruto said, with Alexis looking at him surprised, before smiling. Oh, Alexis Rhodes. Replied Alexis. Nice to meet you, Alexis. Said Naruto, before leaving to head back to his dorm, while Alexis watched him as he left. Naruto Uzumaki. Alexis said, intrigued by the whiskered blonde. Asterisk later, asterisk. Naruto looked at the welcoming dinner for the Slifers. It wasn't much, but he wasn't complaining. He wasn't really one for fancy dinners anyway, as long as it's good, he's fine with it. Shame there's no ramen, though. Naruto thought, before seeing that Jaden had already started eating. His attention was then turned to the front of the room, where the head of the Slifer dorm stepped out. Hello children, I am Professor Banner, the head of the Slifer dorm. Greeted Banner, making Jaden pause mid-bite, before laughing a little. Are you related to Bruce Banner in any way? Jaden asked, since he couldn't resist making the joke. No I'm not. Banner said, suddenly appearing in front of Jaden and Cyrus's table, much to their surprise, with a tick mark on his forehead. Darn kids, always asking me that, always making me angry. You won't like me when I'm angry. Banner said as his voice got deeper. Outside the dorm, one could feel the ground shaking as the students panicked and ran away. Holy shit, he is the Hulk. Later. I. I did not see that coming. Jaden said with wide eyes. I don't think any of us were. Stated Naruto with a similar expression. Jaden, why, why did you have to make a Hulk joke? Cyrus asked with an exasperated tone, while pouring some tea. I didn't think he'd actually turn into the Hulk. Jaden exclaimed in his defense. How was he supposed to know it would happen? Thankfully, they all managed to escape and the Slifer dorm was still standing, though they swore never to make Banner angry again. And with that, they had just invoked Murphy's Law. Naruto and Blair were currently in Jaden, Cyrus, and Chumley's room, relaxing and hanging out with their friends. Suddenly, both Naruto and Jaden's PDAs went off, signaling that they had a message. Pulling them out, Naruto frowned that they both were from Chaz, with the obelisk blue student challenging them both to anti-duels, the winner getting the loser's best cards. Cool, I guess I'll get to duel in that arena after all. Jaden said in excitement, but Naruto shook his head. I wouldn't do that, Jaden. After our duels and anti-rule duels are against the school's rules. If you're caught, and you will get caught, you'll be expelled. Chaz likely knows this and is hoping to get us both in trouble. Naruto said. Ah man. Jaden said, disappointed and annoyed that he won't get to duel Chaz. Naruto saved the message and sent it to Chancellor Shepard, knowing he'll handle it. Besides, maybe if Jaden's lucky, he'll still get to duel Chaz. Next day. After waking up, Naruto and Jaden had both been called to the Chancellor's office, where they found Shepard and an annoyed Chaz waiting for them. With Growler was also being present, given he had heard about it, and was hoping to both get one of his obelisk blues out of trouble, while also knocking down the Slifer slackers who beat him. Hello boys. Naruto, I want to thank you for sending me that message, and I'm pleased that you both did the right thing, rather than rushing off to accept Chaz's challenge. Rest assured, he'll be properly reprimanded and will not do such a thing again. Shepard said, with Naruto and Jaden nodding, though the latter was still annoyed. Man, and I was really looking forward to dueling him, too. Jaden said, with Growler jumping at the chance that was just presented to him. Chancellor, might I suggest we still let the Slaw dash, I mean Jaden and Chaz duel. If Chaz wins, he gets to decide his punishment. Growler suggested. Shepard looked at him skeptically knowing it was just a way to get Chaz out of trouble. Yeah. Let's do that. It'd be a heck of a way to start off the school year. Jaden said, excited at the chance of getting to duel Chaz, with Shepard nodding slowly at hearing this. 
Very well, a duel between Jaden and Chaz to help start things off. Good idea, mid-boss. Shepard said to Growler, who nodded proudly, before his eyes snapped open at realizing what he just said. C.H. Chancellor. Growler said, not believing that he was still being called that nickname. What do you think Chaz? Are you up for it? Though be aware, this is not an anti-duel. Shepard said, with the obelisk shrugging, not really caring if it was an anti-duel, or not. Sure, mid-boss actually has a good idea. Chaz said, only caring that he'll be able to get the duel he wanted. W.H. What were you doing? I'm trying to help you, here. Growler shouted, not believing his own student was now calling him that. Sorry, but the name fits. Chaz said nonchalantly. Told you, mid-boss. Naruto said laughing, as Growler gritted his teeth, since it seems that he'll never escape that accursed nickname. Later. All the students gathered at the dual field to watch the match between Jaden and Chaz, while said Slifer and Obelisk stood across from each other. Time to see if you beating Growler was a fluke or not. Chaz said smirking. We'll also find out which of us is really gonna be the next king of games. Stated Jaden with a smirk of his own. Yeah, yeah, just get ready to lose slacker. Activating their dual discs, Jaden and Chaz each drew five cards. Duel. Jaden, 4000. Chaz, 4000. All right slacker, my move. For my first move, I summon reborn zombie in defense mode. Chaz said, summoning the monster to his side of the field. Reborn Zombie. Attribute, Dark. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Zombie. Effect, While you have no cards in your hand, this card is not destroyed as a result of battle while in attack position. Damage calculation is applied normally. ATK slash 1000 def slash 1600. And I'll place one card face down. Chaz said, before ending his turn. Well that's one way to start a duel, but I'm gonna go a little bigger. Jaden said, drawing a card and saw it was avian, while also having burst in a tricks and polymerization in his hand. I play polymerization to fuse elemental heroes avian and burst in a tricks, to fusion summon elemental hero flame wingman in attack mode. Jaden said as his two heroes fused together and merged into their stronger form. Elemental Hero Flame Wingman Attribute, Wind Level, 8, Card Type, Fusion Effect Monster Monster Type, Warrior Effect, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the ATK of the destroyed monster. ATK slash 2100 def slash 1200 Told you I'd start big. Jaden said, only to look confused when Chaz smirked. I was hoping you would, slacker. I activate my face down card, Thonian Polymer. Said Chaz, revealing his trap card. Thonian Polymer. Card type, normal trap. Effect, you can only activate this card when your opponent summons a fusion monster. Tribute one monster on your side of the field to take control of that fusion monster. Now I sacrifice my reborn zombie and take control of your wingman. Chaz said as reborn zombie vanished in a flash of light, along with flame wingman reappearing on Chaz's side of the field. Oh man. Well it's a good thing that flame wingman was a special summon, so I can still summon elemental hero clayman in defense mode. Jaden said. Elemental hero clayman. Attribute, Earth. Level, 4. Card type, normal monster. Monster type, warrior. Card text, an elemental hero with a clay body built to last. He will preserve his elemental hero colleagues at any cost. ATK slash 800 def slash 2000. They're all set. Jaden said, since that's all he can do. Yeah, all set for me to knock down. Chaz said, before drawing a card. I summon Thonian Soldier. Thonian Soldier. 
Attribute, Dark. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. Effect, When this monster is destroyed, your opponent takes any battle damage you took from that battle. ATK slash 1200 def slash 1400. Now go Flame Wingman, attack with Skydive Scorcher. Flame Wingman was covered in flames as he dived towards Clayman, destroying him. And thanks to Wingman's ability, you take damage equal to your destroyed monster's attack points. Chaz said smirking, as Wingman burned Jaden. Jaden, 4,800 is equal to 3,200. But I'm not done yet, slacker. Now my soldier attacks. Go, windstorm slash. Thonian soldier charged and slashed Jaden, lowering his life points further. Jaden, 3,200, 1,200 is equal to 2,000. The obelisk students cheered at seeing Chaz taking down the slifer, while Jaden's friends looked worried. Humph, are you finally realizing your place at this academy, Slifer Slacker? I end my turn with a face down. Go ahead, Slacker. Chaz said, only to hear what he assumed was Jaden crying making him smirk, that he reduced the Slacker to tears. Only for his smirk to vanish, when Jaden stood up, showing he was laughing. Man this is so fun, better than I imagined. I summoned elemental hero Sparkman. Jaden said, summoning the electric hero. Elemental hero Sparkman. Attribute, light. Level, 4, card type, normal monster. Monster type, warrior. Card text, an elemental hero and a warrior of light who proficiently wields many kinds of armaments. His shining surge flash cuts off the path of villainy. ATK slash 1600 def slash 1400. Alright Sparkman, attack with static shockwave. Jaden said as Sparkman let loose a blast of electricity, destroying Thonian soldier while the monster's sword flew up and hit Jaden. Chaz, 4000, 400 is equal to 3600. Jaden, 2000, 400 is equal to 1600. Still think it's great, slacker? Cause when my soldier is destroyed, you take the same amount of damage as I do. The difference is you hardly have any left. Chaz said. The duel's not over yet. I throw down a face down and call it a turn. Jaden said, placing a face down. Play whatever you like, my next attack will finish you. Go flame wingman. Chaz commanded. Not so fast. Here's a trap card for you, Mirror Gate. Retorted Jaden. Mirror Gate. Card type, Normal Trap. Effect, Activate only when an opponent's monster battles a monster that you control. Switch control of the battling monsters, and then calculate damage. Sparkman and Wingman glowed before switching places, with Wingman now back on Jaden's side and Sparkman on Chaz. No. Chaz exclaimed at seeing the monsters being swapped. Chaz, 3600, 500 is equal to 3100. And like you said Chaz, now Flame Wingman's ability deals damage equal to Sparkman's attack points. Chaz cried out as Wingman electrocuted him with Sparkman's electricity. Chaz, 3100, 1600 is equal to 1500. Alright, way to play J. Cyrus cheered. Hmm, he's doing better than I expected. Alexis commented, while standing beside Zane, who remained silent, simply focusing on the duel. Grr, alright, I activate Thonian Blast. Chaz said. Thonian Blast. Card type, normal spell. Effect, activate only when a face-up monster you control is destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Destroy one face-up monster on the field and inflict damage to your opponent equal to half of its ATK. Now since you destroyed one of my monsters, I get to destroy one of yours and you take damage equal to half its attack points. Chaz said, pleased that he just needed one more attack to win. Jaden, 1600, 1050 is equal to 550. 
Now I activate Call of the Haunted to bring back Thonian Soldier. Chaz said as his monster was revived. Call of the Haunted. Card Type, Continuous Trap. Effect, Activate this card by targeting one monster in your graveyard, special summon that target in attack position. When this card leaves the field, destroy that target. When that target is destroyed, destroy this card. But he's not sticking around, because I sacrifice my soldier to summon Mephist the Infernal General. Mephist the Infernal General. Attribute, Dark. Level, 5, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Fiend. Effect, when this card attacks with an ATK that is higher than the death of your opponent's defense position monster, inflict the difference as battle damage to your opponent's life points. When this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent's life points, discard one card randomly from your opponent's hand. ATK slash 1800 death slash 1700. Not bad. Jaden stated. Not bad? Yeah, keep saying that, because come next turn you're done slacker. Retorted Chaz. We'll just have to see, won't we Chaz? Jaden said, while drawing and smiling at what he drew. Well I hate to disappoint, Chaz, but it looks like I'm ending this duel. I activate Monster Reborn, and with it, I'm bringing back Flame Wingman. Jaden said. Monster Reborn. Card Type, Normal Spell. Effect, Target one monster in either GY, Special Summon it. What? Chaz shouted as Flame Wingman rose up on Jaden's field. That's right, now Flame Wingman. Attack Mephist the Infernal General. Jaden said, with Wingman flying up and diving towards Chaz's monster, destroying it. Chaz, 1500, 300 is equal to 1200. And now, thanks to Wingman's ability, you take damage equal to Mephist's attack points. Gah! Chaz cried out, as Flame Wingman blasted him with flames and destroyed the last of his life points. Chaz, 1200, 1800 is equal to minus 600. And that's game. Jaden said, while posing. The arena was stunned at what they just saw, a slifer slacker beating an obelisk blue. No one knew what to say. That is until the slifers suddenly started cheering, soon joined by the Ras and some of the obelisks for the amazing duel. Chaz fell to his knees in shock, not believing he lost to a slifer slacker of all people. Even worse, Shepard had told him before that his punishment was to write a 30-page essay on why after-hour dueling and anti-duels were wrong, if he lost. 30 pages. All right, way to go Jaden. Cyrus cheered. Truly a splendid duel. Bastion said, clapping at Jaden once again showing his skill. Naruto nodded with a smile, having had faith that Jaden would win while also seeing that he and his monsters have a powerful bond. Wow, he's really good. Said Blair, having not seen Jaden's duel against Growler. Whoa, a slifer beating an obelisk. Chumley muttered with wide eyes, never having thought he'd see such a thing happen. Though seeing Jaden win and remembering Naruto's words, it lit a fire in Chumley, one he had thought was extinguished. A determined flame to become a great duelist and now seeing everyone cheering for Jaden, a slifer red, for his victory, Chumley started thinking it was time to get back into the game, literally. Naruto tapped his fingers against his desk as he sat in his first class, which was Growler's class, with a bored look on his face. Growler was currently quizzing the first years on the rules and mechanics of duel monsters, all of which Naruto already knew. Sure, Naruto was the one who wanted to attend Duel Academy, but he didn't think it'd be so boring. Though he did pay attention when Alexis was called to list all the different card types. Duel monster cards can be separated into normal monsters, fusion monsters, ritual monsters, effect monsters, traps cards, and spell cards. Trap cards can be separated into normal traps, counter traps, and continuous traps, while spell cards can be separate into normal spells, continuous spells, equip spells, quick play spells, ritual spells, and field spells. Alexis explained with a textbook answer. 
and soon there will be Synchro Monsters, Tuner Monsters, and XYZ Monsters. Naruto thought, remembering Pegasus telling him of the new card types and summoning methods he's working on. Perfect. As expected from one of my obelisk blues. Growler praised. Of course meet Dr. Growler. Alexis said quickly after nearly saying mid-boss. While she found the nickname funny, she also wanted to still act professional in class. Now who should we question next? Growler said, looking around before zeroing in on the Slifers, specifically Cyrus. You, Cyrus Truesdale. Explain to the class what a field spell is. Growler said, causing Cyrus to jump up at being called on suddenly. A, uh, a, uh, a uh, field spell is the card, that um, affects the field? Cyrus said, stumbling over his answer at being put on the spot like this. Even pre-duelers know the answer to this slifer slacker. An obelisk shouted, making some of the other students laugh. Well, I guess we know who inherited both the brains and dueling skills between you and your brother. Can anyone else answer the question, anyone? Growler said with a small smirk at getting to humiliate a slifer. Unfortunately, his smirk and good mood were wiped away when Naruto stood up and answered. Field spell cards are spell cards that affect the layout of the dual field along with the monsters on it. The main purpose of field spell centers around boosting the ATK and def points of monsters with a specific attribute, type, or archetype, such as the field spell Umi which increases the ATK and def points of all fish, sea serpent, thunder, and aqua monsters. However, other field spells also have the effects of recycling cards, like the Grand Spellbook Tower, weakening the opponent's monsters, like Shuren's Castle of Mist, searching monsters, and or swarming the field, like Shrine of Mist Valley, or even preventing the field from being swarmed, like Summon Breaker. Another example would be the Skyscraper Field Spell, which increases the ATK points of elemental hero monsters by a 1000 during damage calculation, if they're weaker than the monster they're attacking. I'm sure you're familiar with that field spell, mid-boss. Naruto said, while smirking at the end. Oh yeah, I used Skyscraper to beat you mid-boss and your golem. So, in a way, if you make fun of the Slifers, you're really making fun of yourself. Added Jaden in defense of his friend. This had the entire class laughing at Growler, both at the reminder of his loss to Jaden and being called mid-boss again. Growler, meanwhile, bit down on his handkerchief while glaring murderously at Naruto and Jaden, both for using that accursed nickname he couldn't escape and the reminder that he lost to a slifer slacker. That's it. I don't care if he knows Yugi Muto and Sido Kaiba, I'll see both those slifers expelled, if it's the last thing I do. Growler mentally swore. After that, it wasn't long until class ended, with Naruto and Blair exiting the classroom, only to stop when Alexis walked up to them. Hey Naruto, hey Blair. Alexis greeted them with a smile. Hey Alexis. Replied Naruto. Hello. Blair said. I was just on my way to the library to do some dual quizzes, do you want to join me? Alexis asked, as after hearing Naruto's in-death answer to what field spells are, along with giving several examples, she wanted to see what else he knew. Yeah, that sounds good. Naruto replied, also wanting to see what Alexis knew, as well. Blair nodded in agreement, as it never hurt to study up on the different aspects of dual monsters, or to refresh on what you already know. Great, let's go. Alexis said as they headed towards the library. All the while they were unaware of Growler watching them, feigning going to his office. He was annoyed at seeing an obelisk interacting with a couple of slifer slackers, especially Uzumaki. But after watching them, Growler slowly grinned as he came up with a foolproof plan to get Naruto expelled. Yes, yes. It's perfect. And besides, between him and Jaden Yuki, Uzumaki is the bigger annoyance, him and that nickname. First, I'll deal with him and then Jaden Yuki, then we'll see who the real mid-boss is. Growler thought as he started laughing madly. The students who saw this slowly backed away, 
or quickly walked around the clearly mad teacher. Later. After finishing the dual quizzes with Alexis, Naruto and Blair joined up with Jaden and Cyrus before heading to Professor Banner's class. By the way thanks for before Naruto, Jaden. Cyrus whispered, since he didn't want to risk disrupting Banner and making him angry. No problem. Replied Naruto. Huh, for what? Jaden asked half asleep, with Cyrus gaining a tick mark at seeing this, for sticking up for me. Cyrus said loudly, momentarily forgetting his earlier worry of disrupting the class. Cyrus. Freezing at hearing his name, Cyrus slowly turned and paled when he saw Professor Banner looming over him with a strained smile. Did you? Just. Disrupt. My class? That, makes me so angry. Banner said, with the Slifers starting to freak out as they remembered the welcoming dinner. N.N. No. Of course not, Professor Banner, sir. Ho how about we just just calm down, please? Syra said, hoping to avoid another rampage. Unfortunately, his words had the opposite effect and just made Banner angrier. Calm down? Calm down? I am perfectly calm. Banner shouted as his voice once again got deeper and he transformed again. Not a moment later, all the students ran out of the classroom with a loud girlish shriek to escape the rampaging professor. Gee, thanks Cyrus. This is exactly what I wanted to do, run away from a hulkied out professor. Blair said sarcastically. Me? It's Jaden's fault that I had to raise my voice said Cyrus, shifting the blame onto Jaden. Don't blame me, you're the one who told him to calm down. Jaden retorted, knowing you never tell an angry person to calm down. Well if you hadn't fallen asleep, I wouldn't have had to shout in the first place. Stated Cyrus. Yeah well, you didn't have to shout at all. Jaden said. It's your fault. No it's yours. No yours. 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 It's both your faults, how about that? Naruto said loudly, while smacking them both upside the head. Just then Alexis, Jasmine, and Mindy managed to catch up with them, the latter two looking freaked out and the former was shocked. Does, does that happen often with you guys? Alexis asked, given that Banner was head of the Slifer dorm, it's a miracle it was still standing. It's a miracle the entire academy was still standing. Jaden, having finished arguing with Cyrus, just laughed and waved it off. No, not really. Banner's actually a pretty cool guy, at least until someone or something sets him off. Jaden said, while muttering the last part. Come on, I guess we have some free time until our next class. Naruto said, still wanting to put as much distance between them and Banner until he calms down. Later, with Growler. Perfect. Growler thought, looking over the finished fake love letter he wrote for Naruto, with it being addressed from Alexis. Now, he just had to put on the finishing touches, grabbing a mirror and some lipstick, Growler paused for a moment. No, 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 there's nothing girly about it, I'm not wearing it because I want to it's for a good cause. Growler thought. Reassuring himself of his own masculinity, Growler put it on and kissed the envelope. Ha! Huh. Now just to sneak it into his locker. Growler thought, while going towards the gym. After making sure all the students were out of the locker room, Growler went inside and began searching for Naruto's locker. After locating it, Growler put the letter on top of his shoes, before running out. Though what Growler didn't know was that he was being watched. With Naruto. There you are Blair. Naruto said, seeing his roommate now dress in his gym attire. Yeah, where were you? We didn't see you in the locker room? Jaden asked. I, I just don't like changing in front of other people, okay? Blair said quickly, since she had to wait for everyone else to be finished changing before she could go in and she also couldn't risk changing in the girls' locker room since someone might recognize who she was. 
That made Naruto and Jaden shrug in acceptance. Hey, where's Cyrus? Blair asked, wanting to change the subject, while also curious since they had gotten separated while escaping Banner's rampage. Don't worry, I have someone in the locker room keeping an eye out for him. Replied Naruto, much to his fellow Slifer's confusion. With Cyrus. Oh man, finally I made it. I didn't realize how big this place was. Cyrus said, entering the locker room after getting lost in his escape from Banner. Come to think of it, should we even be having class after that? Then again, this could be a recurring thing that everyone else has just gotten used to it. I feel I should be concerned about that. Cyrus said to himself. He might have to ask his brother just how often Banner gets angry like that. Shaking those thoughts for now, Cyrus went to his locker, only to stop when he saw Naruto, still dressed his slifer uniform, reading a letter with narrowed eyes. Huh, Naruto? What are you still doing dressed in your uniform and not in class? And what's that you're reading? Cyrus asked. In response, Naruto shook his head and handed him the letter. Reading it, Cyrus gained a horrified look when he saw it was a love letter from Alexis addressed to Naruto. Ah man. Why do the girls always go for the wild-looking bad boys or the dark mysterious guys? Cyrus lamented, since now he had to compete with both his brother and Naruto. Seriously? Ever since I arrived in Japan, people keep saying I'm a delinquent because I have blonde hair and whisker marks. Said Naruto annoyed with that stereotype. Eh uh uh. So sorry. Saira stuttered out, which Naruto just waved off, since while it was annoying, he has gotten used to it, for the most part. Anyway, as for the letter, it's a fake, it was put there by mid-boss. Not only that, but look, her name is spelled wrong. Naruto said, pointing at the signature and it did show her name was spelled wrong. Well, Maybe Alexis was shy about confessing her feelings in a letter, with her name being spelled incorrectly being a typo, or something. Cyrus said. Growler might be a jackass, but he doubts he'd actually try and get Naruto expelled like this. I don't think so. Alexis seems more like the type to be upfront about her feelings for someone, and not tell them through a letter. Naruto replied, while placing the letter down on a nearby bench. Now forget about it, we still have gym class remember. Naruto reminded. Ah, right. Saira said, rushing to his locker to get changed. Still, maybe you should huh? Saira said, before looking around in confusion when he didn't see Naruto anywhere. While confused at his sudden disappearing act, Cyrus looked at the letter on the bench and grabbed it. Maybe Naruto's right and it is a fake. But, what if Alexis did write it? I should make sure, just in case she is expecting Naruto to arrive. Cyrus thought, since if it was from Alexis and Naruto doesn't show up, she might think he rejected her. Better to be safe than sorry. Putting the letter in his coat's pocket before hanging it in his locker, Cyrus ran out to the track, only to pause in confusion when he saw Naruto there, looking to be in the middle of his workout. Wasn't he just, how did he? Cyrus thought, looking between the locker room and the track, wondering if he was starting to see things. Meanwhile, the girls had finished their stretches and were taking a break, with Jasmine and Mindy taking notice of the fact that Naruto had taken off his jacket, wearing a black tank top underneath that clung to his muscles. Wow, I didn't realize he was so fit. Jasmine said, admiring the view. I know. What do you think Alexis, doesn't Naruto look good? Mindy teased, having noticed that Alexis had taken an interest in Naruto, ever since his entry duel against Growler. Alexis shot her friend an annoyed look, but did glance at Naruto. He does look good. The thought obelisk queen with a light blush on her face. Naruto, oblivious to the girls admiring him, took notice that Blair was starting to fall behind and looked tired. Hey Blair, you alright? Naruto asked, worried since he looked ready to pass out at any moment. Yeah, yeah I I am Fiwo. 
Blair said, when he suddenly tripped. Though before he could hit the ground, Naruto caught him. You sure about that? Naruto asked. Blair couldn't respond as her face turned even more red from the way Naruto was holding her. Miss Fontaine, is it all right if Blair takes break? Naruto asked the teacher slash nurse, who smiled and nodded. Of course. And good job, looking out for your classmate, Naruto. Fonda said, glad to see the students looking out for each other. Nodding, Naruto lifted Blair onto his back, with his blush intensifying. Why am I blushing? Sure I'm a romantic, but I just met Naruto. Besides, I like Zane. Blair thought as Naruto carried him over to a bench and handed him some water. Thanks. Blair muttered, lowering his head so Naruto didn't see his blush. No problem. Though why is your face all red? Do you have a fever? Naruto asked, putting his hand on his forehead, with Blair's blush intensifying even further, which worried Naruto even more. Miss Fontaine, is all right if I take Blair to the nurse's office? Naruto asked. That's fine, I'll check on Blair once class is over. Fonda replied. Crap baskets. Blair thought, worried that Miss Fontaine will find out that she's a girl, but she can't say anything without arousing suspicions. She'll just have to do her best to hide her cover. Asterisk later night, asterisk. Naruto and Blair walked up the stairs of the Slifer dorm, having finished getting the ladder checked over by Miss Fontaine. Blair was relieved that her secret wasn't exposed, as Miss Fontaine only checked her temperature and other signs to see if she was sick. After seeing the he was in good health, the nurse concluded that it was heat stroke, while telling Blair to take it easy and drink plenty of water. Passing Jaden, Cyrus, and Chumley's room, Naruto decided to see how they were doing. Along with making sure that Cyrus hadn't done anything foolish regarding the love letter. Opening the door, Naruto saw only Jaden and Chumley sitting at the desk, working on Chumley's deck. Hey Naruto, Blair. What's up? Jaden asked, after looking up and seeing them. Nothing, we just wanted to see how you guys were doing. Naruto replied. Well, we're just working on Chumley's deck and giving him a few cards that could help him. Sai gave him Des Kangaroo and I gave him Master of Oz. Jaden said, with Chumley nodding since both cards were good for his deck. Huh, is that so? Well I think I have some cards that could work for your deck. Naruto said, opening his deck case and pulling out a few cards. I think these will help you. Said Naruto, handing the cards to Chumley, who was surprised by the offered cards. Wow, thanks. Chumley said, looking at the cards, while taking notice of Vampiric Koala and Enraged Battle Ox. Why Enraged Battle Ox? Asked Chumley since it wouldn't exactly fit his Australian-themed deck. Because of its effect, it gives all beast, beast warrior, and winged beast monsters you control the ability to inflict piercing damage. Something that your deck would benefit from, given it's mostly beast monsters. Said Naruto, with Chumley nodding in understanding and gratefulness. By the way, where's Cyrus? Naruto asked, not seeing the blue-haired boy. I don't know. He wasn't here when I got back. Chumley said he had an errand to run. Replied Jaden, causing Naruto to frown, since had a feeling he knew what errand Cyrus was running. I just hope I'm wrong. Naruto thought. With Cyrus. Unfortunately for Naruto, Cyrus was doing exactly what he told him not to do, as he arrived at the obelisk girl's dorm. Huh, wonder whose boat that is? Cyrus wondered, seeing another boat with a motor. Getting out, Cyrus walked quietly through the gates, being careful not to be seen or heard, knowing if he's caught, he'll definitely be expelled. Meanwhile, Growler hid in the bushes while waiting for Naruto to arrive, where he can snap a photo of him breaking school rules and get him expelled. Though what he didn't expect was to see Cyrus arriving instead of Naruto, with Alexis, Mindy, and Jasmine Star. 
The three obelisk girls entered the bathhouse before discarding their towels, given it was girls only, they went in naked rather than wearing swimsuits. Sighing in relaxation at the heated water, they started talking about their classes. I can't believe Dr. Growler is still being called mid-boss by everyone. Jasmine said giggling. I know. But you have to admit, the nickname really fits him. What do you think Alexis? Mindy asked, with Alexis smiling in response. It does, doesn't it? I'm still surprised Naruto has the guts to call Growler that to his face without fear or worry. It's, actually pretty cool. Alexis said, while Jasmine and Mindy looked at her with knowing smirks. After a while of soaking in the water, Alexis stood up and began stretching to work the kinks out of her body. Seeing this, Jasmine and Mindy sunk deeper into the water, while they knew that they have great bodies, they couldn't help but feel a little jealous and depressed at seeing Alexis's figure when compared to their own. Though it also further showed why nearly every male student, and even a few females, wanted to get a date with Alexis. Suddenly, the girls froze when they heard a shout. What is that field spell nitwit doing here? Was that a boy? Jasmine demanded, while standing up and quickly grabbing her towel, followed by Mindy and Alexis grabbing their towels as well, to cover up. Let's find out. Mindy said, angry that someone was likely trying to peep on them. Running out the bathhouse, the girls saw Cyrus frozen in fear. Uh, ee -hee, I can explain. Cyrus said nervously, at seeing the three angry girls. Later. A love letter? You seriously expect us to believe Alexis wrote you a love letter? Mindy demanded to the bound Cyrus. After catching Cyrus and making sure he couldn't escape, the girls changed into their uniforms and began interrogating him as to why he was outside the bathhouse. Not me, I swear. It was addressed to Naruto, but he thought it was fake. I only came here to see if it was real. I have it in my pocket. Syra said, pulling it out and handing it to them, with the girls seeing it was a love letter from Alexis, much to the said girl's annoyance. For once, I'm glad that Atticus isn't here. Alexis thought, knowing exactly what his reaction would be if he ever found out about this love letter. What's worse is that he'd likely approve of Naruto and try to set them up. Not that she'd be opposed to it, but she just met him, and knowing her brother, he'd do it in the most embarrassing way possible. Cyrus, my name's not even spelled right, and I don't even wear lipstick. Alexis said. Ah crud, so Naruto was right. Said Cyrus, realizing he just messed up big time. You said Naruto knew it was fake, did he say who put it in his locker? Alexis asked. Naruto said that it was Growler who put it in there. Answered Cyrus, with the girls nodding, since with Naruto's nickname and beating him in the entry exam, it's very likely that Growler would do like this to get him expelled. Though given he was teacher, they couldn't accuse him without actual proof. I don't know, he says he talked with Naruto, but Naruto was working out while Cyrus was in the locker room. Jasmine said skeptically, thinking that Cyrus was lying. Wait what? Cyrus thought, now very confused as he was sure he saw Naruto in the locker room, but then saw him running laps not long after. Though Cyrus didn't say anything since he's already in trouble, and didn't want them to think he's crazy also. Especially since he's now questioning his own sanity right now. The girls discussed what to do with Cyrus, with Jasmine and Mindy wanting to turn him in, but Alexis had another idea. One where she'll get the chance to duel the object of her interest. With Naruto. After helping Chumley with his deck, Naruto and Blair headed back to their room to relax. Though it didn't last when Naruto's PDA went off, pulling it out, Naruto frowned when he saw it was from an anonymous called. We have your friend Cyrus, if you want him back, come to the girls' dorm now, and bring you deck. Hearing the message Naruto silently cursed Cyrus for not listening and swears that he's going to kill him. Grabbing his deck and dual disc, Naruto prepared to head out to meet the kidnappers, only for Blair to stop him. I wanna go too. Blair said, 
wanting to see Naruto duel. Like with Jaden, she didn't see Naruto's entry exam duel against Growler as she had to leave early, given her disguise was been messed up during her own duel. Ugh, fine, but stay close. I'd rather the kidnapper not get another hostage. Naruto said, not having time to argue with Cyrus in danger. Later. Arriving the girl's dorm, Naruto blinked in confusion when he saw Alexis, Mindy, and Jasmine, along with Cyrus. Huh, what happened? Were you three kidnapped too? Naruto asked, looking around for the kidnapper. Hearing this, the obelisk girl sweat dropped since it seemed obvious that they sent message, but apparently Naruto didn't see that. Is he always this dense? Jasmine asked, looking at Cyrus and Blair. We've only just met him. Replied Cyrus and Blair. It took a moment for Naruto to realize the girls were the ones who kidnapped Cyrus. Okay good. Now your friend here was caught trespassing in the girls' dorm and now you both are too. Jasmine said smirking, making Naruto frown with a light glare at them, since he didn't like being manipulated, even less when his friends are dragged into it. So what do you want then? Naruto demanded. Simple, a duel between you and me. If I win, then you three will be reported to the Chancellor, but if you win, then you go free. Alexis replied, while smirking at getting to duel Naruto. You also get a date with Alexis. Mindy added quickly, her words catching everyone off guard, with Naruto and Alexis blushing in embarrassment. What did she just say? Demanded Dark Magician Girl, while appearing from Naruto's deck with an annoyed expression. I uh, I accept the duel, but you don't have to go on a date with me if you don't want to. Naruto said, both because he didn't want to force Alexis to accept that kind of deal and he didn't want upset Dark Magician Girl, or Mana as he calls her. This surprised the girls, since anyone else would have jumped at the chance to get a date with Alexis. But it did earn Naruto some of their respect, since he was giving Alexis a choice. All right, let's go. Alexis said. The group took two boats out to the lake, with the girls and Cyrus in one, while Naruto and Blair were in the other. Pulling out his deck, Naruto decided to use his elemental hero deck this time. Let's duel. Naruto, 4000. Alexis, 4000. I'll start things off. Alexis said, drawing and looked at the cards she drew, before looking at her hand to see what she had. First, I activate the spell card, Pot of Greed, allowing me to draw two more cards. Alexis said. Pot of Greed. Card type, Normal Spell. Effect, draw two cards from your deck. Seeing the cards she now had, Alexis suppressed her smirk as she had a strategy form in her mind. Now then I summon to the field Cyber Tutu. Alexis said, while summoning her monster. Cyber Tutu. Attribute, Earth. Level, 3, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. Effect, if the ATK of each monster your opponent controls is higher than the ATK of this card, this card can attack your opponent directly. ATK slash 1000 def slash 800. Now I activate Prima Light, sacrificing my Tutu to summon Cyber Prima. Said Alexis, while playing the spell card. Prima Light. Card type, Quick Play Spell. Effect, send one face up, Cyber Tutu, you control to the graveyard. Special summon one, Cyber Prima, from your hand. Cyber Tutu vanished in a pillar of light, with the stronger Cyber Prima now appearing in her place. Cyber Prima. Attribute, Earth. Level, 6, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. Effect, when this card is summoned, destroy all spell cards on the field. ATK slash 2300 def slash 1600. Finally, I place two cards face down and end my turn. Alexis said, while setting two cards face down. Nice move, but now it's my turn, I draw. Naruto said, and looked at his hand. 
First, I summon elemental hero Solid Soldier. Said Naruto, summoning the hero monster, while the others were surprised at the appearance of an elemental hero. Elemental hero Solid Soldier. Attribute, Earth. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. Effect, when this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one level 4 or lower, hero, monster from your hand. If this card is sent from the monster zone to the GY by a spell effect, you can target one, hero, monster in your GY, except, elemental hero solid soldier, special summon it in defense position. You can only use this effect of, elemental hero solid soldier, once per turn. ATK slash 1300 def slash 1100. An elemental hero? But I thought you used a darkness deck. Alexis asked, with Naruto smirking at her question. True, but I also have an elemental hero deck. But unlike Jaden, I use the less known heroes, so don't think you'll have any easier time seeing familiar cards. Naruto said, with Alexis shaking off her surprise before returning his smirk. I wouldn't dream of it. Replied Alexis. Good, because I summoned Solid Soldier. I get use his effect to special summon a level 4 or lower, hero, monster from my hand, and I the perfect one. Come forth elemental hero Shadow Mist. Naruto said as the shadows rose up and condensed into the dark elemental hero. Elemental hero Shadow Mist. Attribute, Dark. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. Effect, if this card is special summoned, you can add one, change, quick play spell card from your deck to your hand. If this card is sent to the GY, you can add one, hero, monster from your deck to your hand, except, elemental hero, shadow mist. You can only use one, elemental hero, shadow mist, effect per turn, and only once that turn. ATK slash 1000 def slash 1500. But that's not all because Shadow Mist was special summoned this turn, I get use her ability as well and add one, change, spell from my deck to my hand and I choose Mask Change. Naruto said, while drawing said card. Mask Change? Muttered Alexis, having never heard of that card before. Now activate the card I just drew and use it on Elemental Hero Shadow Mist. Naruto declared, while placing the spell card in his dual disc. Mask Change. Card Type, Quick Play Spell. Effect, Target 1, Hero, Monster you control, send it to the GY, also, after that, if it left the field by this effect, Special Summon 1, Masked Hero, Monster from your extra deck with the same attribute that the sent monster had when it was on the field, its original attribute, if face down. A mask appeared in front of Shadow Mist, which she grabbed and put on, before she began transforming into a different monster. Meet Masked Hero Dark Law. Naruto said as his new monster appeared. Masked Hero Dark Law. Attribute, Dark. Level, 6, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior Slash Fusion. Effect, Must Be Special Summoned by, Mask Change. Any card sent to your opponent's GY is banished instead. Once per turn, if your opponent adds a cards from their deck to their hand, except during the draw phase or the damage step you can banish one random card from your opponent's hand. ATK slash 2400 def slash 1800. What? A fusion monster? Alexis asked, shocked that Naruto brought out a fusion monster without polymerization and only one monster. That's right. See the masked heroes are a special type of fusion summon. They don't need polymerization to be summoned, or two or more fusion materials. All I need is a change spell card to bring them out. Naruto explained, much to their amazement at seeing such a fusion summon. Wow. He's definitely giving his all. Alexis thought, knowing this is going to be a tough duel. Now Dark Law, attack her Cyber Prima. Naruto commanded, with Dark Law giving a cry and charged forward. I activate my face downs, Doble Passe and Spirit Barrier. Alexis said, activating her trap cards. 
Doble Passe. Card Type, Normal Trap. Effect, Activate when your opponent attacks a face-up attack position monster you control. It becomes a direct attack. Then, the monster originally selected as the attack target attacks your opponent directly. Spirit Barrier. Card Type, Continuous Trap. Effect, while you control a monster, you take no battle damage. With Doble Passe I can change your attack from Prima to a direct attack and with Spirit Barrier, because I control a monster, I take no battle damage. Alexis said as Dark Law switched from attacking Cyber Prima to Alexis, but a barrier appeared, blocking his attack. And because of Doble Passe, Cyber Prima gets to attack you directly. Alexis said as Cyber Prima skated across the water and delivered a kick towards Naruto, making him stumble back as his life points took a big hit. Naruto, 4000, 2300 is equal to 1700. Naruto. Blair said, worried at seeing him take that much damage. Damn, only my first turn she's already taken out half my life points. Naruto thought, impressed that Alexis hasn't only summoned a powerful monster, but prevented him from destroying her monster and then landed a direct attack. But rather than be worried, he was excited. Excited at getting to duel someone who can challenge him. So, are you impressed? Alexis asked smirking. Impressed, I'm in love. That's the first time anyone's been able to damage me in a long time. Naruto said smiling, with Alexis blushing lightly at the praise, while also being pleased at her success. Though she quickly shook it off, remembering she's still in the middle of a duel. You're sweet, but I still have to crush you. Alexis said. We'll see who does the crushing. I place two cards face down and end my turn. Said Naruto. Then it's my move. And I'll start by activating Machine Angel Ritual. Alexis said, using the card she just drew as a large burning torch appeared behind her. Machine Angel Ritual. Card Type, Ritual Spell. Effect, this card can be used to ritual summon any Cyber Angel Ritual Monster. You must also tribute monsters from your hand or field whose total levels exactly equal the level of the ritual monster you ritual summon. Oh crap. Naruto muttered, knowing what's coming next. Having dealt with Yugi's ritual monsters and knew whatever Alexis is summoning won't be a pushover. With this card, I get to ritual summon any cyber angel monster using monsters from my hand or field, as long as the total level matches the exact level of the monster I'm summoning. So, I use my level 2 Cyber Pati Angel and level 6 Mind on Air for my hand to ritual summon Cyber Angel Dakini. Alexis declared as her monsters appeared and flew into the fire as it unleashed a powerful wind that rocked the boats, forcing the others to cover their faces before it vanished, while Alexis's monster appeared from the torch and jumped in front of her. Cyber Angel Dakini Attribute, Light. Level, 8, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Fairy Slash Ritual. Effect, This card can only be Ritual Summoned with the Ritual Spell Card, Machine Angel Ritual. When this card is Special Summoned, your opponent selects and destroys one of their monsters. During battle between this attacking card and a defense position monster whose def is lower than the ATK of this card, inflict the difference as battle damage to your opponent. ATK slash 2700 def slash 2400. Now because Cyber Angel Dakini was special summoned you have to. Alexis trailed off as her eyes widened at what she saw. What? Naruto asked, confused as to why she suddenly paused and looked at something with shocked look. Seeing that she was looking behind him, Naruto looked only for his eyes to widen at what he saw. The winds created from Alexis's ritual summon had caused Blair's hat to be blown off, showing the, he was really a she. What? What are you all looking at? Blair asked, not realizing her hat was missing. Uh, Blair. Naruto said, while pointing to her head. Confused, Blair put a hand on her head, only for her eyes to widen in horror when she didn't feel her hat was where it usually was. I I I I can explain. 
Blair said quickly. Blair's a girl? Cyrus exclaimed in shock at seeing Blair's long hair. Why isn't she in the obelisk girl's dorm then? Mindy questioned. We'll have to tell Miss Fontaine and the Chancellor to move her in. Added Jasmine. Naruto frowned when he saw Blair pale at what they said and turned back to them. Oi. I'm adding another stipulation, if I win, you don't tell anyone about Blair being a girl and she gets to stay in the Red Dorm. Naruto said, much to their shock, especially Blair's. What? We can't let her stay in a dorm full of boys. Jasmine said, only to silenced when Alexis gave her look. Deal. Alexis said, having noticed Blair's expression when her friend started talking about telling the Chancellor and Miss Fontaine. Alexis may not know why Blair seemed afraid, maybe she thought she'd be kicked out or something, but if Naruto wants to help her and if she wanted to stay in the Red Dorm, then so be it. Nodding in thanks, the duel resumed. Now then, as I was saying, because Dakini was special summoned, you have to choose one of your monsters to destroy. Alexis said, continuing from where she left off, before noticing Blair's true appearance. Damn, sorry Solid Soldier. Naruto said, looking at his monster, with Solid Soldier and nodding in understanding as he vanished, knowing his fellow heroes will help their duelist win. Now Dakini attack, masked hero Dark Law. Alexis commanded, with Dakini skating forward with her swords ready to cut through Dark Law. Not so fast. I activate the trap card, Drain Shield. Naruto said as his trap card flipped face up. Draining Shield. Card type, Normal Trap. Effect, negate the attack of one of your opponent's monsters and increase your life points by the attacking monster's ATK. This not only stops your attack, but I get life points equal to Dakini's ATK points. Naruto said as a barrier appeared, blocking the Cyber Angel's attack, while his life points went back up. Naruto, 1700 plus 2700 is equal to 4400. Gur, I end my turn. Alexis said, annoyed that his life points are now higher than before, but even so, she was still having fun with this duel and happy at meeting someone who can challenge her. Whether she wins or loses, there's no way she's turning Naruto in and lose the chance to duel him some more. All right, my move. Naruto said, preparing to draw a card, while hoping he draws the one, he needs. Come one, I have all the cards I need in my hand, I just need two more card. Naruto thought, knowing if he draws something that can let him get the cards he needs, he'll win the duel. Drawing his card, Naruto looked at it and smiled, before activating the spell card he drew. I play Pot of Greed, allowing me to draw two more cards. Naruto said, before he smirked at the two cards he drew, which made Alexis uneasy, since that meant he drew the cards he needed. Alright, first I'm activating the field spell, Fusion Gate. Naruto said as dark swirling clouds appeared overhead. Fusion Gate. Card Type, Field Spell. Effect. Fusion monsters can be fusion summoned without using polymerization. The fusion material monsters used for this fusion summon are removed from play, instead of being sent to the graveyard. Now, by removing from play the elemental hero Woodsman and elemental hero Prisma in my hand, I get to fusion summon elemental hero Gaia. Naruto said as both heroes appeared before flying into the vortex, while a colossal figure emerged landing in the lake sending waves, and the boats rocking, forcing them to steady themselves as they looked in amazement at the massive elemental hero. Elemental Hero Gaia. Attribute, Earth. Level, 6, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior Slash Fusion. Effect, must be fusion summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways. When this card is fusion summoned, target one face-up monster your opponent controls, until the end phase, its ATK is halved and this card gains the same amount of ATK. ATK slash 2200 def slash 2600. And thanks to Gaia's ability, I can target one of your monsters and for the rest of this turn its ATK points are cut in half, while Gaia's are increased by the same amount. 
and I choose Cyber Angel Dakini. Naruto said, as Elemental Hero Gaia absorbed Dakini's attack points, weakening her and strengthening himself. Cyber Angel Dakini, ATK-2700 DEF-2400, ATK-1350 DEF-2400, Elemental Hero Gaia, ATK-2200 DEF-2600, ATK-3550 DEF-2600. Dakini. Alexa said in worry at her strongest monster being weakened, while Naruto's hero grew stronger than her Dakini and Prima. Thankfully, Spirit Barrier was still in effect, so her life points were safe. Now I'm going to summon Elemental Hero Stratos to the field in attack mode. Naruto said, summoning the Wind Hero. Elemental Hero Stratos. Attribute, Wind. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. Effect, when this card is normal or special summoned, you can activate one of these effects. Destroy spells slash traps on the field, up to the number of hero monsters you control, except this card. Add one hero monster from your deck to your hand. ATK slash 1800 def slash 300. And thanks to his special ability, I get to destroy any number of spells slash traps on the field equal to the number of hero monsters I control, except Stratos. Luckily, I have two heroes and only one trap card to destroy. Go Stratos, destroy Spirit Barrier. Naruto said, Stratos cupping his hands and launching a blast of wind that destroyed Spirit Barrier. Oh no! Alexa said as her life points were now vulnerable. Oh yes! Now I'm activating the spell card, H Heated Heart to boost Stratos's attack points by 500. Naruto said as Stratos was covered in a flame-like aura. Elemental Hero Stratos, ATK-1800 DEF-600, ATK-2300 DEF-600. Now Masked Hero Dark Law, Attack Cyber Angel Dakini. Naruto commanded, Dark Law charging forward and destroying the ritual monster while damaging Alexis's life points. Alexis, 4000. 1050 is equal to 2950. Elemental Hero Gaia attack Cyber Prima. Said Naruto as Gaia roared and slammed his fist on the ground causing a tremor that destroyed Cyber Prima and lowered Alexis's life points even further. Alexis 2950, 1250 is equal to 1700. Now Stratos, attack her directly and end this duel. Naruto said, with Stratos flying forward and unleashing a blast of wind at Alexis, destroying the last of her life points. Alexis, 1700, 2300 is equal to minus 600. A ah. Uh. Alexis screamed as the boat rocked from the wind, before she fell into the water. Alexis. Mindy and Jasmine screamed in fear, confusing and worrying Naruto as a result. What is it? Naruto asked as they looked at him fearfully. She can't swim. Mindy shouted, making Naruto's eyes widen. Shit. Naruto cursed, before throwing off his jacket and dual disc, then dived into the water. Seeing Alexis sinking to the bottom of the lake, Naruto swam after her using his chakra to make him go faster. Once he reached her, Naruto wrapped an arm around her waist and swam back to the surface. Breaking through the surface, Naruto and Alexis both gasped for air, while Blair helped pull Alexis onto the boat, followed by Naruto climbing on. Why in the hell did you want to duel on the lake, if you can't swim? Naruto demanded, while wrapping his jacket around her to keep her warm. I, thought it'd be cool. Alexis muttered while blushing in embarrassment, since in hindsight, it wasn't one of her best ideas. Hearing this, Naruto facebombed, but didn't say anything further, knowing she'll have learned her lesson. Paddling over to the other boat, Naruto helped Alexis get in with her friends, while pulling Cyrus into his and Blair's. A deal's a deal, you three can go free, and thank you, Naruto. Alexis said, with Naruto nodding, no problem. See you later, let's go Cyrus, you have a lot of rowing to do. 
Naruto said. Wah me? Why do I have to row? Asked Cyrus, since he had just been held hostage. Because I told you to forget about that stupid love letter, but you didn't, dragging us into this mess as a result. Naruto retorted, with Cyrus hanging his head, knowing Naruto was right. Hey Naruto, do you want to, hang out on Sunday? Alexis asked hesitantly and a little hopeful. Alexis, you don't have to go out with me, just because I won and saved you. Said Naruto. I know, but it doesn't have to be a date, I just want to show my appreciation for helping me. Alexis said smiling, though part of her was disappointed it wasn't a date. Well, if you're sure. Naruto said, giving her a chance to back out. I am. Replied Alexis. Okay, Sunday it is. Said Naruto smiling at her, which Alexis returned. All the while Mana and Blair were annoyed at hearing this. Mana for the fact that her love interest was going to be hanging out with an attractive girl. And Blair, given that Naruto helped make sure she didn't have to go to the girl's dorm, and no other reason. Though unknown to Blair, her crush on Zane was beginning to shift to a crush on Naruto. Waving to the girls, Naruto turned to Blair. Blair, why are you hiding the fact that you're a girl? Naruto asked, now that the duel was over, and no one would be getting in trouble. Because if people knew I was a girl, I'd automatically be put in the obelisk girl's dorm and I didn't want that. If I was put in obelisk blue, I want it to be because I prove that I deserve to be in obelisk blue, not because of some stupid rule. Blair said, crossing her arms. Hearing this, Naruto nodded since he could relate to wanting to advance in rank because of his skills. He also knew that while Kaiba had a major role in the construction and founding of Duel Academy, he wasn't exactly very hands-on with the project, preferring to leave the hiring and rules for the academy up to the former chairman and superintendent, Kajimaru. He only gained full ownership after Kajimaru left. I'll see about talking to Kaiba about getting that fixed. Naruto said, knowing that Kaiba would prefer that the students were sorted based on their skills, rather than their gender or connections. If there's one thing Kaiba hated, it's duelists who couldn't back up their words with actual skill. Maybe he can also see about building a red girl's dorm and a yellow girl's dorm, along with improving the red dorm as well. Naruto thought, since while he didn't have a problem with the red dorm, he's sure that the rest of the slifers would like better housing. Though, it may take a while for him to get the paperwork and changes through. Though it might be best to also tell Jaden and Chumley, since they are your friends also and you can trust them, just like Cyrus and I. Naruto said, with Cyrus nodding in agreement. Yeah, we won't tell anyone. Said Cyrus. Blair thought over it for a moment, before nodding slowly. It would be nice not having to hide her gender from her friends. Naruto looked himself over in the mirror, now being dressed in more casual clothing consisting black shoes, dark blue jeans, a dark blue belt with his deck cases, black shirt and an orange sports jacket. The reason for the more casual clothing was because it was Sunday, so they didn't have school, with Naruto having gotten ready to go meet with Alexis to hang out. Sitting in her chair, Blair watched Naruto with annoyed expression, with Mana floating beside her, not that Blair could see her, with a similar expression. Blair was also wearing a casual attire of blue and white sneakers, light blue jeans, a dark yellow shirt, a crimson red vest, and a black and red hat with the Duel Monsters logo on the front. The reason she had a new hat was because her old one had gotten lost after it was blown away during Naruto and Alexis's duel. Not that Blair was complaining since it did get annoying wearing the large and ugly hat, with her new one still being able to hide her long hair. It feels great being back in orange again, maybe I should think of wearing an orange shirt under my jacket. Naruto muttered in thought. When he first arrived on Earth, his old jumpsuit had been ripped to shreds both from his fight with Sasuke and being thrown through a dimensional rift, it had also been covered in blood, so he had been forced to throw it away. Yugi had been kind enough to let him use some of his old clothes until he could get his own, and when Naruto had been able to, 
he had only gotten a few articles of orange clothes since he didn't think he'd be taken seriously as a duelist if he dressed all in orange. Well are you ready for your date with Alexis? Blair asked with some snark in her tone, catching both herself and Naruto off guard. What is wrong with me? Why am I getting upset over Naruto going out with Alexis? Blair thought, while shaking her head. Uh, it's not a date, we're just hanging out as friends. Naruto said, while looking at her warily, since given his experience whenever a girl talks to him like that, he usually ends up getting punched. He then turned his attention to one of his decks on his desk with a frown. What is it? Blair asked, as Naruto picked up the deck and shuffled through the cards. Just one of the decks that I'm working on. It's supposed to be a spellcaster deck with some warriors and dragons as support, but it's still missing a few cards. Naruto answered, before putting it in the case on his belt. The reason for the deck was because Naruto wanted to create one specifically for Dark Magician Girl, rather than having to switch her between his Elemental Hero and Darkness decks. Hearing this made Mana smile. She personally didn't mind Naruto rotating her between his two current decks, as it meant she'd always have a chance to summon, but he still wanted to create a deck to use her to her full potential. Unfortunately, she then remembered he was about to go meet Alexis and she sighed in frustration. Maybe I need to be more open with my feelings. He still thinks I only see him as a little brother figure and that I'm just being overprotective. I need to get Naruto to see me in a more romantic light. Mana thought. She then shot Blair a dirty look, while Blair might not be able to see it, she could see the girl was starting to develop a crush on Naruto. Meaning she not only had to compete with Alexis, but now she had to compete with the lowly, too. Once Naruto felt that he was ready, he went to leave the room. See ya Blair, have fun with Mindy and Jasmine. Naruto said, since the two obelisk girls having offered to take Blair shopping both for some boyish clothes for her disguise and girly ones as well, for when she finally reveals that she's a girl. While Jaden, Cyrus, and Chumley were having a boy's day slash night. Naruto exited the Slifer Red Dorm with Blair following behind him as they headed for the town on the island. It wasn't anything big. It was built as a place for students to hang out and relax without being confined to their dorms or the academy's main building. Once they arrived, they found Alexis, Jasmine, and Mindy waiting for them at the entrance, with all three obelisk girls wearing casual clothes as well. Jasmine and Mindy both wore simple heeled shoes, white jeans, and blue tops. Alexis, meanwhile, was wearing dark blue boots, dark purple pants that stopped just below her knees, a black tank top, and a pale purple sleeveless jacket, which she left open. She looks, really great. Naruto thought, before waving when they looked over to them. Hey Alexis, you look great. Naruto complimented, with Alexis smiling at him. Thanks, you look good too. Replied Alexis, with her friends looking at them with giddy expressions, before they each grabbed Blair's arms. Well, we'll be going now to get Blair her outfits. Have fun on your date. Mindy said teasingly as they ran off with Blair, while Naruto and Alexis blushed at her latter comment. It's not a date. They muttered, before looking at each other. So, what do you want to do? Naruto asked, while feeling nervous, since this is the first time he's ever hung out with a girl alone. Well, there's a music store and card shop we can check out, along with a couple other shops as well. Answered Alexis, while also feeling nervous, given the only guys she's ever really spent time with were her brother and Zane. Yeah, that sounds good, let's go. Naruto said smiling, which Alexis returned as they both headed into town. Later. After checking out the music and card shops, they headed to an anime-slash-manga store, the latter of which Naruto has gotten into when he first saw it. Afterwards, they went to a cafe for lunch, with Alexis offering to pay, though Naruto tried protesting and was willing to pay himself, but Alexis insisted since she still needed to repay him for saving her life. The nervousness that they had both originally felt also faded away, and they could both say that they had a great time. 
Now that it was getting late into the day, the two decided it was time to head back to their dorms. This was really fun, I'm glad we could do it. Naruto said, while smiling at Alexis, which she returned. Would that be yes to doing this again? Alexis asked a little hopefully. Definitely. Replied Naruto, only to blink when he caught sight of something, which Alexis noticed. Turning to where Naruto was looking, Alexis saw Miss Dorothy in her truck outside the card shop, and it looked like she was having trouble starting it. Looking at each other, they both walked over to see if she needed help. Do you need any help, Miss Dorothy? Naruto asked, getting the woman's attention as she smiled when she saw who it was. Oh, Naruto, and Alexis. Good to see you both, and actually yes. I was just picking up some cards to refill the shop by the academy. But this old thing seems like it's on its last leg. Even worse, with the promotion exams being so close, along with the new shipment of dual monster cards, not to mention the super rare ones that will also arrive, which Sido Kaiba had personally arranged for a personal transport. Dorothy said, worried that her truck would break down before the shipment arrives. This had Naruto's attention at hearing that a new shipment of cards would be arriving soon. Hopefully I'll be able to get some before they're sold out. Maybe I'll even find some to complete my spellcaster deck. Naruto thought. Well if you want, we can help you get the truck back to the shop. Alexis offered, with Naruto nodding in agreement. Thank you both, that'd be a big help. Said Miss Dorothy, while smiling in gratitude. Later. It had taken a while to help Miss Dorothy get the truck back to the card shop, but they had eventually managed it. Now, Naruto and Alexis were walking by the lake, with Naruto having offered to walk her back to the dock where the boats are parked, since he wasn't allowed at the obelisk blue girl's dorm. Today had been really great. I wanted to thank you, Naruto, both for today and again for saving me. I also want to apologize for how I tricked you into dueling me. Alexis said, with Naruto waving it off with a smile. Don't worry about it, that was the greatest duel that I've had in a long time. And you don't have to thank me for saving you, I'll always be there to help if you need me. Said Naruto. That made Alexis smile softly at him, starting to realize how great of a guy Naruto is. Though she blushed when she realized just how close they were to each other and stepped back. I I should be be getting back now. See you Naruto, and good luck on your exam. Alexis said, while walking towards the boats that she, Jasmine and Mindy took. You too, Alexis. Said Naruto, while waving to her. Once she was out of sight, Naruto turned and began heading back to the Slifer dorm. Time skip, Wednesday. Wake up. A-H. Bang. Ow. Naruto groaned as he rubbed his head after banging it against the top bunk, all while his eyes started twitching as the QB laughed in his head. One thing Naruto was definitely grateful for after arriving on Earth, was that the QB has mellowed out over the years. Given the fact that there is no chakra or ninja in this world to seal it away again and use the fox as a weapon. Though granted, the QB didn't go out of its way to talk with Naruto, preferring to remain silent or sleep, with only times it did talk was when something catches its interest or to annoy Naruto, like acting as an internal alarm clock. Personally, Naruto wasn't sure what was more annoying, being woken up by the QB or the sun. Shaking his head, Naruto looked and saw Blair still asleep, allowing Naruto the chance to get dressed in his uniform. Hey Blair, wake up, the promotion exams are today. Naruto said, shaking the girl awake once he finished getting changed. Hmm, oh yeah, the promotion exams, thanks for waking me, Naruto. Blair said, rubbing her eyes with a yawn. Nodding, Naruto exited the room to let Blair get changed. A few moments later, Blair exited the room in her boy disguise, and they went to get some breakfast before heading to the academy. Arriving at the classroom, they gulped nervously when they saw Banner was the professor overseeing the written portion of the exams. Thankfully, they hadn't started yet and didn't have to worry about setting Banner off. All right students, 
you all have an hour to finish your tests and you may now begin. Banner said, before the door suddenly barged open and Cyrus ran in. Phew, made it. Cyrus said relieved. Cyrus. Banner said with a strained smile, making Cyrus pale when he saw Banner. Uh uh, PR Professor Banner, sir, I dash. Hey Cy, glad I caught up with you. Though I was held back helping Miss Dorothy with her dash. Jaden. Banner said as his eye started twitching, with Jaden freezing in fear at seeing the big red flag, or in this case, big green flag. Thankfully, to the relief of the entire class, Banner didn't get angry. Both of you, please take your seats, now. Banner said, smiling tightly. Nodding rapidly, both slifers quickly took their seats, not wanting to risk another Hulk incident. Later. All right class, the written exam is now over. So, please walk, do not run, to get in line for today's new rare cards. Banner said. They're here? Immediately, the students raved and rushed out of the classroom to be the first ones in line for the new cards. Unfortunately, in their rush, they ended up making a mess of the classroom, which caused Banner's eyes to start twitching, while releasing a few angry grunts. I said. Walk. Do. Not. Run. Now, you've wrecked the classroom. Banner said, before he transformed again with a roar. Crash. Smash students. Once Hulk Banner was gone, Naruto, Blair, Bastion, Alexis and Chaz poked their heads out from under their desks and saw the massive hole in the wall, where Hulk Banner smashed through. They knew that would happen immediately after all the other students ran out, rather than following instructions, and become targets of Banner's anger. So they did the smart thing and waited for him to chase after the others. Hey Bastion, you mind waking up the sleeping beauties, while we go check out the rare cards? Naruto asked. Yes, I can do that. Bastion answered, since he had no desire to get any rare cards, as his decks were already perfectly organized. Plus, he had no desire to be caught up in another rampage. Nodding in thanks, Naruto, Blair, and Alexis left the classroom, with Chaz following after them. Normally, Chaz would have stayed to look over his test and sent his lackeys to get him the rare cards, but after his loss against Jaden, they abandoned him. So he couldn't look his test over without the risk of missing out on some rare cards. Thankfully, when they arrived at the card shop, none of the other students were there, meaning they were still being chased by Banner. Hey Sadie, where are the rare cards? Naruto asked, since he didn't see any of the new packs. Sorry, we're all sold out. An anonymous buyer showed up and bought them all. Sadie said apologetically. Just great. Chaz muttered as he exited the shop, angry at losing out on getting even a single rare card. Someone bought every card? Naruto thought, wondering who could have gotten here early enough to but all the rare cards. Not long after, Jaden and Cyrus arrived and were filled in on what happened, both relieved that they didn't get caught up in Banner's rampage and disappointed at not getting any rare cards. Not so fast, you kids. I have some booster packs and rare cards right here, that I managed to save. Dorothy said, coming out the back. Really? They asked in excitement. Yep, and here they are as thanks for the help you three gave me. Said Dorothy, while handing them to Naruto, Alexis, and Jaden, who thanked her. Opening the packs, the three looked over the cards, while trading a few of the ones that fit better in the others' decks, along with giving the rest to Blair and Cyrus, much to their gratitude. Naruto was especially happy, as he pulled out his spellcaster deck and added the cards he had to it. These are perfect, now my spellcaster deck is complete. Naruto thought in excitement. Even better, he'll get to use it for the promotion exam as well. With Chaz. First I lose to that slifer slacker in front of the entire school, costing me my lackeys and my reputation, now I've missed out on getting any rare cards because some loser bought them all. Chaz said angrily. Oh, 
What's this about rare cards? Said a familiar voice, getting Chaz's attention. Looking up a set of stairs, Chaz raised a brow when he saw a guy wearing a cloak and hat. This would have set Chaz on edge at this stranger's appearance, if not for the fact it was a pretty terrible disguise. Mid-boss, what are you doing? Chaz questioned, while wondering what was up with the outfit. My name is not, ahem. I mean, who is this mid-boss? Growler said, after taking a moment to calm himself. You're mid-boss. And what's with the get-up? Isn't it a little early for Duel Monsters Spirit Day? Chaz asked, as Growler got annoyed and threw his hat off. All right, that's it. Look, I'm the one who bought all the rare cards, see? Growler said, opening his cloak and revealing several rows of cards. The rare cards. Chaz said, surprised to see them. That's right, and they're all yours Chaz, as long as you use them to duel against Naruto. Growler said. Uzumaki? No way, if I'm dueling any slifer, it'll be Jaden Yuki. Chaz said, more than happy to use the cards to beat Jaden. Ah, but why settle for a slacker, when you could defeat the King of Games student? That alone will boost your reputation to new heights and make everyone forget your loss against Jaden. Growler said, with Chaz nodding in agreement, since that would be better than getting payback against Jaden. Only one problem, we're still in different dorms. So, I couldn't duel him. Chaz said, seeing a major flaw with that plan. Leave that to me, I can arrange it so you and Naruto will face each other in the promotion duel. So, what do you say Chaz? Growler said. Humph, alright, you got yourself a deal mid-boss. Said Chaz smirking. Call me that again, and I'll find someone else to give the cards to. Growler threatened with a scowl. Shutting up now. Chaz said, before looking over the cards Growler gave him. He only saw a few he really liked, and smirked. Knowing that with these, he'll beat Naruto and then move on to Jaden. Later. So, I'm dueling Chaz, huh? Naruto asked frowning. That's right, Naruto. After all, I'm sure anything less wouldn't be a challenge, so I pulled some strings to give you a proper challenge. Said Growler with a smirk, only for it to vanish at Naruto's next words. Well, you're the head of the obelisk dorm and I beat you mid-boss. So yeah, this might be a step up. Naruto said smirking, as Growler fumed, while Chaz pushed down his laughter. Just start the duel already. Growler said through gritted teeth. I hope you're ready to lose Uzumaki, because my deck's gotten an upgrade since my duel against the slacker. Chaz said smirking. Oh, how ironic, because I'm using a new deck as well. Tell me what you think as my monsters take you down. Retorted Naruto, while mentally laughing as he couldn't wait to see the looks on everyone's faces when they see some of the cards in his spellcaster deck. Duel. Naruto, 4000. Chaz, 4000. My move. And I'll start by activating double summon. Naruto said, while playing the spell card double summon. Card type, normal spell. Effect, you can normal summon one additional time this turn. You can only gain this effect once per turn. Now I summon both skilled dark magician and skilled white magician onto the field in ATK mode. Said Naruto as he summoned the two magicians, with them being cladded in black and white, respectively. Skilled dark magician. Attribute, dark. Level, 4, card type, effect monster. Monster type, Spellcaster. Effect, each time a spell card is activated, place one spell counter on this card when that spell resolves, max 3. You can tribute this card with 3 spell counters on it, special summon 1 Dark Magician, from your hand, deck, or GY. ATK slash 1900 def slash 1700. Skilled White Magician. Attribute, Light. Level. 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Spellcaster. 
Effect, each time a spell card is activated, place one spell counter on this card when that spell card resolves, max 3. You can tribute this card with three spell counters on it, special summon one, buster blader, from your hand, deck, or graveyard. ATK slash 1700 def slash 1900. Now, I place one card face down and end my turn. Naruto said, while setting a card face down. Alright, I draw. Now I activate the card I just drew, Magical Mallet, to send it and four cards back to my deck, where I'll then shuffle it and draw the same number of cards I sent back. Chaz said, sending five cards back into his deck. Magical Mallet. Card Type, Normal Spell. Effect, add this card and any number of cards from your hand to the deck and shuffle it. Then draw the same number of cards you added to the deck. Drawing five cards, Chaz smirked, only to frown when he saw both of Naruto's magicians had a glowing orb on their left shoulders. What the? Chaz muttered, while Naruto smirked. You activated my magician's abilities. You see, whenever a spell card is activated, they each gain a spell counter. And when they get three, well I'll leave that as a surprise. Said Naruto, while keeping quiet on the last part of their effects to mess with Chaz. Skilled Dark Magician, counters, 1, Skilled White Magician, counters, 1, this made Chaz mentally curse as he looked at his hand. He drew Magical Mallet again and could use it, but then those magicians would gain another spell counter, and something told Chaz he didn't want them to get to 3. Especially when one was called Skilled Dark Magician. But at the same time, he could summon a powerful monster instead of taking a risk by having to use a spell card. In the end, he had to decide that it'd be worth it to summon a powerful card, rather than risking the chance of those magicians getting closer to three counters. Ah screw it. Chaz thought, I play my own double summon spell card. Chaz said as another orb lit up on skilled dark magician and skilled white magician. Skilled dark magician, counters. 2, skilled white magician, counters, 2, that's another counter. Naruto stated, smirking as he now just needed one more. Yeah well they won't be sticking around long enough for that to happen. I summon Thonian soldier. Chaz said as his soldier appeared. Thonian soldier. Attribute, dark. Level, 4, card type, effect monster. Monster type, warrior. Effect, when this monster is destroyed, your opponent takes any battle damage you took from that battle. ATK slash 1200 def slash 1400. And now I tribute my soldier, to bring forth Thonian Emperor Dragon. Chaz declared as his Thonian soldier vanished with the Thonian Emperor Dragon appearing in its place. Thonian Emperor Dragon. Attribute, Dark. Level, 6, Card Type. Gemini Monster. Monster Type, Dragon. Effect, this card is treated as a normal monster while face up on the field or in the graveyard. While this card is face up on the field, you can normal summon it to have it be treated as an effect monster with this effect. This card can attack twice during the same battle phase. ATK slash 2400 def slash 1500. And with that I'll put two cards face down and end my turn. Chaz said, placing two cards on the field. He would have tried attacking, but he wasn't going to risk losing his Emperor Dragon from the face down Naruto had. Chaz may be confident he'll win with the cards Growler gave him, but he wasn't going to underestimate Naruto and this new deck he has. Alright, my move. Naruto said, drawing his card. First. I play the spell card, Pot of Greed, to draw two cards. Along with adding a third counter to my magicians. Said Naruto. Pot of Greed. Card type, Normal Spell. Effect, draw two cards from your deck. Skilled Dark Magician, Counters, 3, Skilled White Magician, Counters, 3, The stage is now set Chaz, I hope you're ready. Naruto said with a smirk, which had Chaz nervous of what he's about to do. Now first, I'm going to activate my skilled white magician's ability, 
because he has three spell counters, I get to tribute him in order to summon forth, the legendary dragon slayer, Buster Blader. Naruto said, much to everyone's shock as skilled white magician glowed brightly, before transforming into Buster Blader. Buster Blader. Attribute, Earth. Level, 7, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. Effect, Increase the ATK of this card by 500 points for each Dragon Type monster on your opponent's side of the field and in your opponent's graveyard. ATK slash 2600 def slash 2300. What? Buster Blader. Chaz said, shocked at seeing one of the King of Games ace monsters. That's right, and because you have a dragon type monster on the field, my blader gains 500 ATK points. Said Naruto as Buster Blader grew stronger. Buster Blader, ATK slash 2600 DEF slash 2300. ATK slash 3100 DEF slash 2300. But that's not all, now I'm activating skilled Dark Magician's effect as well. Allowing me to tribute him to bring out an even stronger monster. Naruto said, with Chaz's eyes widening in shock as realization hit him. If skilled White Magician brought out Buster Blader, then that means skilled Dark Magician will bring out. I tribute skilled Dark Magician to summon the Master of Magic, the Dark Magician. Said Naruto, which shocked everyone to their very core at the chance of seeing, in person, the King of Games' true ace and strongest monster. Skilled Dark Magician crossed his arm in an X fashion as a magic ring appeared beneath him, before it lifted up and began transforming him into the legendary magician. Though the Dark Magician that Naruto summoned had a different color scheme, Instead of the dark blue robes and light blue skin, this dark magician wore dark crimson red robes with gold trimming, had silver hair, and tan skin. Dark Magician Attribute, Dark Level, 7, Card Type, Normal Monster Monster Type, Spellcaster Card Text, The Ultimate Wizard in Terms of Attack and Defense ATK slash 2500 Def slash 2100 Despite not looking the same, everyone cheered at seeing the legendary card, even more so than when Naruto first summoned Dark Magician Girl. All except Chaz, who was the one unfortunate enough to be facing down these two legendary cards. Ho how. Only the King of Games has that card. Chaz said, shocked and afraid to see the Dark Magician. True, Yugi still has the Dark Magician. This version though was owned by a duelist he had beaten during the Battle City tournament, and as per the rules of Battle City, Yugi got their best card, this Dark Magician. Which Yugi, then in turn, passed on to me. Naruto said. Yugi had received two copies of this particular Dark Magician from Arcana, both as a thank you for saving his life, and because he wasn't able to give Yugi his best card after their duel. Arcana had mailed them to Yugi after reuniting with his now wife, Catherine, and getting help for his mental issues. Yugi had sent them to Naruto as a congratulations for getting into Duel Academy, given he was fine with his own dark magician. Though he first had Pegasus fix them of their illegal trimming. I activate Threatening Roar. Chaz said, while quickly activating his trap card Threatening Roar. Card Type, Normal Trap. Effect your opponent cannot declare an attack this turn. Chaz sighed in relief that he was safe from being attacked by these powerful monsters, at least for this turn. Okay, you're safe for now. Naruto said, ending his turn. Alright, I draw. Chaz said, mentally praying he drew a card he could use. First I'm activating Magical Mallet again to send it and two other cards to my deck, and then draw three new cards. Chaz said, relieved when he saw the cards he drew. Now I summon to the field X-Head Cannon. Chaz said as the machine monster appeared. X-Head Cannon. Attribute, Light. Level, 4, Card Type, Normal Monster. Monster Type, Machine. Card Text, A monster with a mighty cannon barrel, it is able to integrate its attacks. It attacks in many ways by combining and separating with other monsters. 
ATK slash 1800 def 1500. And I activate my face down frontline base to summon Z Metal Tank. Chaz said, before summoning his second machine monster. Z Metal Tank. Attribute, Light. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Machine Slash Union. Effect, Once per turn, you can either target one X Head Cannon or Y Dragon Head you control, equip this card to that target, or unequip this card and special summon it. A monster equipped with this card gains 600 ATK slash death, also if the equipped monster would be destroyed by battle or card effect, destroy this card instead. ATK slash 1500 death slash 1300. Now, I combine X Head Cannon with Z Metal Tank to summon X Z Tank Cannon. Chaz said, as the two machine monsters combine together. X Z Tank Cannon. Attribute, Light. Level, 6, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Machine Slash Fusion. Effect, must first be special summoned, from your extra deck, by banishing the above cards you control. You do not use, polymerization, dot. Cannot be special summoned from the graveyard. You can discard one card, then target one face down spell slash trap card your opponent controls, destroy that target. ATK slash 2400 def slash 2100. Now, I use my tank cannon's ability, by discarding one card, I get destroy one face down spell or trap card. Go tank cannon, destroy his face down. Chaz commanded. XZ tank cannon aimed its guns at Naruto's face down and open fired destroying it. You may have destroyed my face down, but you forget, I still have two monsters on the field. Both of them being stronger than yours. Naruto reminded, with Buster Blader and Dark Magician standing in front of him, while staring down Chaz and his monsters. Maybe, but let's see how good they are when I play this. Swords of Revealing Light. Chaz said, playing his spell card, as Swords of Light fell down around Naruto and his monsters. Swords of Revealing Light. Card Type, Normal Spell. Effect, after this card's activation, it remains on the field, but destroy it during the end phase of your opponent's third turn. When this card is activated, if your opponent controls a face-down monster, flip all monsters they control face-up. While this card is face-up on the field, your opponent's monsters cannot declare an attack. Now, you can't attack for three of your turns. Chaz said, relieved he was able to buy himself some time to bring out the rest of his VWXYZ monsters. TSK, my move. Naruto said, drawing his card, annoyed he couldn't attack. Now I activate card of sanctity, allowing us both to draw until we have six cards. Naruto said as he played the spell card. Card of Sanctity. Card type, Normal Spell. Effect, each player draws until they have six cards in their hand. Humph, thanks for the cards, slacker. Chaz said, after seeing that he now had more machines to summon next turn. I wouldn't be thanking me so soon, if I were you. Because I'm activating the spell card, Bond Between Teacher and Student. Bond between teacher and student. Card type, normal spell. Effect, if you control, dark magician, special summon one, dark magician girl, from your hand, deck, or gy, then you can set one, dark magic attack, dark burning attack, dark burning magic or dark magic twin burst, directly from your deck. You can only activate one, bond between teacher and student, per turn. With dark magician out on the field, I get bring out his prized student as well, come forth Dark Magician Girl. Naruto said as Dark Magician Girl appeared on the field beside her master, with both magicians nodding to each other. Dark Magician Girl. Attribute, Dark. Level, 6, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Spellcaster. Effect, Gains 300 ATK for every Dark Magician or Magician of Black Chaos in the GY. ATK slash 2000 def slash 1700. And because I activated Bond between Teacher and Student, 
I now get to set dark magic attack from my deck straight to the field, which I will now activate. Dark Magician, destroy swords of revealing light. Naruto said. Dark magic attack. Card type, normal spell. Effect, if you control, dark magician, destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls. Dark magician swung his staff, releasing a blast of magic as the swords of light were destroyed, along with frontline base. Oh no! Chaz exclaimed, seeing that he was now wide open. Oh yes! Now I'm using the spell card polymerization to fuse Dark Magician Girl with the Red Ice Black Dragon in my hand, to fusion summon Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight. Naruto said, as Red Ice Black Dragon appeared, while Dark Magician Girl's robes and wand changed into armor and a sword, before jumping into the air and she mounted Red Ice Black Dragon. Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight. Attribute, Dark. Level, 7, Card Type. Effect Monster. Monster Type, Dragon Slash Fusion. Effect, must be fusion summoned with the above fusion materials or with the Eye of Timaeus. Once per turn, quick effect you can send one card from your hand to the GY, then target one face-up card on the field, destroy that target. ATK Slash 2600 Def Slash 1700. You have Red Ice Black Dragon, too? Chaz said, shocked that he not only had Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl, but the Red Ice Black Dragon as well. He was also seeing just how outclassed he was in this duel. That's right. And I'm going to use my Dragon Knight's ability, by sending one card to the graveyard, she gets to destroy one face-up card on the field, and I choose XZ Tank Cannon. Naruto said, Dark Magician Girl held up her sword, before swinging it at Tank Cannon, before releasing a wave of magic at it, destroying the fusion monster. Now Buster Blader, destroy Thonian Emperor Dragon with Destruction Sword Flash. Naruto commanded, with Buster Blader charging forward and leapt into the air, before swinging his sword down on Chaz's dragon, destroying it. Chaz, 4,700 is equal to 3,300. Dark Magician attack him directly. Dark Magic attack said Naruto. Twirling his staff, Dark Magician flew in front of Chaz, before unleashing a blast of magic. Chaz, 3400, 2500 is equal to 900. Now Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight, end this with Black Dragon Burst. Naruto said. Both Dark Magician Girl and Red Ice Black Dragon unleashed a combined blast of magic and fire at Chaz, wiping out the rest of his life points. Chaz, 900, 2600 is equal to minus 1700. Gah! Chaz cried out as he was thrown back from the attacks. Meanwhile, the students cheered at seeing the amazing duel and seeing so many legendary monsters. Well done Naruto! Shepard said over the intercom. Never before in the history of Duel Academy has a slifer bested an obelisk in such a way. You not only held your own but was able to outmaneuver Chaz's monsters and traps. It is with great pride I grant you the promotion from Slifer Red to RA Yellow. Shepard said proudly. This made the students cheer for Naruto, the RA Yellows especially at now having the King of Games student in their dorm. I'd also like to inform the students that we have successfully detained Professor Banner and he will be contained until he calms down. Shepard added, much to the relief of everyone. Smash. Reahawaweaha. Smash messy students. Aya am I mis mistake. H he s e seems to h have escaped. PL please w walk, do don't run, to th the nn nearest x exit. Shepard stuttered with his face now a deathly pale, while his eyes were wide with fear. Smash mid boss, too. Hearing this, Growler immediately ran out of the observation deck with a scream, triggering the students to run out of the arena, as well. All while a loud girlish shriek was heard, followed by several crashes. Later. Slifer Dorm. Thanks again for letting me bunk with you guys. Blair said to Jaden and Cyrus in the latter two's room. Hey, no problem. With Naruto and Chumley being promoted to RA Yellow, 
we all need new roommates. Jaden said, as with all the help they've given Chumley, and the fact that he was putting his all in dueling again, he was able to win his promotion duel and advance to RA Yellow also. Yeah. Blair muttered sadly. Hey, what's wrong Blair? Cyrus asked. It's nothing, I'm fine. Answered Blair, all while wondering why she was so upset over Naruto leaving to go to the RA Yellow dorm. Then again, he has been really nice to me and been a great friend, along with keeping my secret. Blair thought, figuring that's why she's upset. There was a knock at the door before it opened, showing Naruto in his new RA yellow uniform. Hey, I just wanted to see how you were doing. Said Naruto, while looking at Blair. I'm I am good. You look good in the new uniform, though I'm sure it won't be long before why you're we wearing be blue. Blair said shakily at the end, since Naruto would just be another rank above her, and farther away from her as well. Yeah, I suppose. Though I don't think it's really my color. Naruto said, while looking at the yellow blazer, before looking at Blair. Listen Blair, I just want you to know, I'm really glad to have met you and got to be your friend. I also know you'll grow to become an incredible duelist. I also know that no matter what dorms we're in, we'll always be friends. Naruto said, while smiling at the younger girl. Blair felt tears in her eyes at his words and lowered her hat to cover her eyes. The same hat that Naruto had gotten for her, after she lost her old one. Yeah, yeah. Yo you're all right. Blair stuttered, while fighting back her. Great, now let's go. Naruto said, much to her confusion. Jigo, go where? Blair asked, with Naruto smiling at her. Our room, you know, just at the end of the walkway. Said Naruto, with Blair's eyes widening at his words. W.H. what? Asked Blair. I worked it out with Chancellor Shepard, and I'm being allowed to stay in the Slifer dorm. Naruto revealed. Hearing this, Blair lifted her hat up and looked at him with wide shocked eyes. You you turned down going to the RA dorm? Why? Blair asked only to blink, when Naruto poked her forehead with his index and middle finger. You, of course. Naruto answered, while smiling at her, and me? Blair stuttered while blushing, as Naruto nodded. Hearing that she was the reason he was choosing to stay in the Slifer dorm, it made her heart lighten up. Though Blair didn't understand the reason for this, she didn't care at the moment, only caring that Naruto was staying. Her tears changing from sadness to joy, Blair hugged Naruto tightly, happy that he was staying, with Naruto smiling and returning the hug. Meanwhile, Jaden and Cyrus cried anime tears at the happy scene, happy for their friends and that Naruto was sticking around. R.A. Dorm Chumley looked around his new room in the R.A. Yellow Dorm, satisfied that he managed to finish getting settled in. He was still shocked that he passed the written exam and won his promotion duel, even more so that he was promoted to R.A. Yellow. He had basically given up on the chance of advancing in rank, but here he is wearing yellow. Chumley then heard his PDA ring and answered it, only to be surprised when he saw that it was his father. Uh, hey dad. Chumley greeted awkwardly, since his dad always wanted him to stay home and help run his sake business. Hey Chumley, I was just calling to. I wanted to. I just heard you were promoted at the academy and I wanted to call and say, that I'm proud of you, son. Said Mr. Huffington, much to Chumley's surprise and happiness. Re really? Chumley asked, his dad nodding. Yeah, I had been considering coming there to bring you home, if you hadn't improved. But now, I see that's no longer needed. You're becoming your own man, Chumley, as well as a great duelist, and I'm happy for you. I'm also sure you've made some great friends at Duel Academy. Said Mr. Huffington, while Chumley smiled with tearful eyes, before looking out the window. Yeah, yeah I really have. I can tell you more when I come home for winter break, Dad. Chumley said as he looked towards the Slifer dorm, since his room had a great view of his old dorm. Slifer dorm. 
to Naruto getting promoted to R.A. Yellow. Jaden said as the three slifers and the newly promoted R.A. clinked their glasses together. Naruto, Jaden, and Cyrus all smiled with flushed expressions, Naruto's being less intense thanks to his healing factor, the reason being that Naruto had managed to sneak in some bottles of sake. Cyrus at first had been hesitant, since they were still underage, but Naruto and Jaden managed to convince him eventually. Blair was currently clinging to Naruto's side with her eyes closed and sporting a small smile, while also having a blue sh on her face as well, showing she was taking part in the drinking, too. Her excitement and happiness of Naruto staying her roommate making her throw caution out the window. Though there was also another reason she for her blue shn happiness, she just doesn't know it yet. Humans and their mating rituals. Kyubi thought, while rolling its eyes before going to sleep, and underneath the full moon, I see a path through a cavern that seems, abandoned. Then, at back the cavern, I see a mysterious lake. So, I go in to look very carefully, and, under just the right angle of light, at the very bottom of the lake, beyond my reflection, I see a rare and powerful card. Naturally, I'd go and get it, but when I reached for it, an arm grabs me, and tries pulling me towards the lake. Ahok. Help me. Not the water. Anything but the water. Cyrus screamed, while Naruto, Blair, and Jaden sat with him at a table. Currently the three Slifers and one RA students were each telling scary stories by drawing cards, with it being the higher the level was the scarier the story. It was Cyrus's turn, having drawn the level 4 earthbound spirit, so it wouldn't be that scary. Wow, you were dragged underwater and drowned Cyrus. That's pretty messed up. How'd you survive? Naruto said in a joking tone, with Cyrus giving a creepy smile. Heaven didn't want me, and hell was full. Said Cyrus, while looking at them all with an ominous expression. Though all four of them soon laughed at the joke, before calming down. Well, it was a good story, a mid-level scare for mid-level card. All right my turn, I hope I get a good one. Jaden said, drawing a card and saw it was Elemental Hero Thunder Giant, a level 6 monster. Ah sweet. Jaden said, showing the card he drew, with Cyrus paling since it was a higher level than his. Ah man, now your story will be way scarier than mine. Cyrus said in despair. Okay, I got a good story. Well, it's actually more of a memory from when I was a little kid, I'd used to hear sounds, but only at night. At first, I thought I was just dreaming, but when I'd open my eyes, I'd find myself surrounded by flames and then hear someone crying out, begging me to help them. I tried running to them, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't find them. And the longer I searched, the louder the screams got and soon I'd feel the flames get more intense around me. Then suddenly the scream stopped and then, someone would grab me from behind and pull me into the fire. But before they could touch me, I'd wake up back in my room. Jaden said, with Cyrus and Blair looking pale at his story, while Naruto narrowed his eyes in thought as he saw Jaden looked down after telling his story. I wonder. Naruto thought, feeling there was also more to the story. Okay Blair, your turn. Jaden said, with the girl nodding shakily. Rewrite. Said Blair, unnerved by Jaden's story. Drawing a card, Blair was relieved it was only a level 3 monster. As Blair began her story, Naruto subtly looked over to Mana, who had been watching and listening to the stories. Hey Mana, is it possible for dual monster spirits to affect the physical world? Naruto asked lowly, as he listened to Blair's story, so he didn't draw the other's attention. It's possible, if the spirit is strong enough, they can affect the physical world if they want. With there even being a select few dual spirits that are strong enough to truly manifest themselves. Like the Egyptian gods, when they were angered by Pegasus bringing them into the dual monsters card game. Mana explained, as it could be possible that Jaden's dreams were the result of a dual monster spirit. Hmm, Naruto thought, as Blair finished her story, meaning it was his turn now. Though before he could draw a card, 
they all jumped in fear when they heard maniacal laughter from behind Jaden. I want to join in on the fright fest. Oh Blair, you aren't wearing your hat I see. Said Banner, appearing out from nowhere, behind Jaden. This made everyone worried as Banner now knew Blair's secret. Oh no, need to worry children, I can keep a secret. Banner said, making them relax and breathe a sigh of relief. Well now that you're here, why don't you draw a card? The higher the level it is, the scarier the story has to be. Naruto explained. Oh, well that sounds easy enough. Let's see. Banner said, drawing a card and revealing it was Five-Headed Dragon, a level 12 monster. I think I'm gonna go to bed now. Syra said, since who knows what kind of creepy and scary stories Banner knew about. It didn't help when he started laughing creepily. What is wrong? Don't you want to hear about the abandoned dorm at the end of the island? Banner said, with Naruto immediately turning to him. The abandoned dorm? That's the place Kaiba wanted me to check out. Naruto thought, as that was one of the things that Kaiba wanted him to investigate, what happened to the missing students. Abandoned dorm? Jaden asked curiously. That's right, not many people talk about it, but there was once a special dorm set at the edge of the forest. It was shut down after several students mysteriously went missing. But that's the mystery of it all, no one knows where they went. The rumor was it had something to do with, the Shadow Games. Banner said mysteriously. Shadow Games, really? None that stuff is true, though. Jaden said, not actually believing the Shadow Games were really. Jaden, you do know I've met people who have taken part in actual Shadow Games. And how can you be skeptical, when you can see and hear dual spirits? Naruto asked with a deadpan look. This made Jaden fall out of his chair, realizing that Naruto was right, while the others laughed. Very true, Naruto. But the abandoned dorm is also off limits, so you can't go anywhere near it. And if I find out you broke the rules, it will make me angry. Banner said with a creepy smiling, making Blair, Cyrus, and Jaden gulping, while Naruto didn't look scared in the slightest. You get angry all the time it doesn't really scare me anymore. Said Naruto, with Banner's creepy smile widening as he leaned in close to Naruto. Oh really, so you aren't scared of anything? Banner challenged. Not a thing. Naruto answered with a smirk. Well then, how about this? Banner said, pulling out a picture and showing it to the four. Immediately when they saw it, the four all screamed in complete horror. My eyes, they burn. Oh God, it's so horrible. What kind of sick monster are you? Mommy, even the QB was in horror at the picture, having seen the picture through Naruto's eyes. By the sage, what the hell is wrong with you? Banner laughed maniacally as the four students rolled around on the floor, covering their eyes at seeing the horrible, horrible picture. The picture in question was of Dr. Growler during a staff Christmas party, where he got drunk and ran around the island, completely naked. Don't mess with the master. And at least you know for sure Midboss is a guy. Banner said, while laughing, as he left the mentally scarred students. Meanwhile, outside the dorm, Growler was fuming. I thought I destroyed all of those pictures. Growler thought, having believed he destroyed all the pictures from that accursed Christmas party. He swore that he'll get that picture and destroy it as well. But onto a more positive note, this might just be the opportunity he was waiting for. I think the Shadow Games should make a comeback. Millennium items and all. Growler thought, before he started laughing manically at his brilliant idea. Hey, does anyone else hear a weird laugh? Blair asked. Yeah, let's go check it out. Said Naruto. Oh shoot. Growler said, before he ran away. Domino City. Ah. Uh. Okay, okay you won. Please, just take anything you want and go. A duelist begged his opponent, 
a masked duelist who introduced himself as Titan, a shadow duelist. What I want, is your soul. Titan said, holding up a Millennium item that resembled the Millennium Puzzle. No please, show some mercy. Said the duelist, while gripping his chest. Mercy? What is that? Titan said cruelly, as a light emanated from his pendant. That engulfed the duelist before they fell to the ground. Rest in peace, in the shadow realm. Titan said, while walking up to the duelist before his phone rang. Speak. Duel Academy? Tomorrow night? I'll be there. Titan said, after hearing the details of the job. Next day. With Naruto. Naruto walked through the forest with Blair, Jaden, and Cyrus following him. The four were currently traveling to the abandoned dorm, Naruto because of the job Kaiba gave him, Jaden wanting to check it out, Cyrus knowing where it was after stumbling onto it, and Blair was also curious about the dorm. Huh, I guess someone was here before us. Naruto stated, shining his flashlight on a red rose, outside of the abandoned dorm's gate. The old dorm. Jaden exclaimed, amazed at seeing it for the first time. And probably lots of ghosts, too. Added Cyrus, wanting to get as far away from the creepy building. Relax, Sai. There's nobody here. Jaden assured, only for him to be proven wrong by a branch snapping. Then what's that? Cyrus exclaimed, while freaking out. Naruto shined his flashlight on the source, only to see Alexis standing there with a flashlight. Oh, hey Alexis. What are you doing here? Naruto asked, while Alexis frowned and walked up them. That's funny. I was about to ask you for, the very same thing. Alexis said, with an annoyed expression. We heard about the abandoned dorm, and we wanted to check it out. Jaden answered. Well that's not very intelligent. Don't you know that kids have a tendency of disappearing around here? Alexis said as she looked at the dorm, while Naruto looked back at the rose, realizing that she was the one that put it there. One of the missing students? You knew them, didn't you? Naruto asked. That's none of your business. Alexis snapped, while glaring at them, surprising the four at seeing the normally level-headed and nice Alexis getting angry. Hey! Don't get angry at Naruto, just for asking! exclaimed Blair, defending her friend, only for Naruto to put a hand on her shoulder. Blair, don't! Naruto said, figuring whoever Alexis lost here was someone she cared a lot about, and probably doesn't like talking about it. No! She's right! I shouldn't have gotten angry. It's just that, two of the students that disappeared here, was my brother, Atticus, and his friend, Yusuke Fujiwara. Alexis revealed, looking at the dorm sadly, before seeing Naruto standing next to her. Well then, that's just another reason for me to find out what happened to those students. Naruto said, confusing the others, find out what happened? What do you mean? Alexis asked. It's part of the reason why I'm at Duel Academy. Kaiba asked me to investigate the abandoned dorm to see what happened to the missing students. If two of the students was your brother and his friend, then it's just another reason for me to find out what happened to them. Naruto said, while putting a hand on Alexis's shoulder, as they looked at him in shock at hearing that Sido Kaiba, himself, asked Naruto to investigate the abandoned dorm. Oh man, that is so cool. You're likely a secret agent. Jaden exclaimed in excitement at learning that Naruto was working for Sido Kaiba himself. I wouldn't go that far. Said Naruto, since he was just more capable at figuring out what happened and not go missing himself, thanks to his chakra. Besides, he wouldn't be a very good secret agent if he just told them all his mission. Still, the fact that you're here to investigate, it means a lot Naruto. Alexis said, happy to know there was a chance to finally learn what happened to her brother. No problem. Though you might want to get back to your dorm, I'll be sure to tell you if I find anything out. Said Naruto, since he already had to look out for Jaden, Cyrus, and Blair, 
he didn't want Alexis to be in potential danger either. Nodding, Alexis waved at them and watched as they entered the abandoned dorm with a worried expression. Even if she's thankful that Naruto was here to investigate what happened, she couldn't help but worry that they'll disappear as well. I hope Naruto knows what he's doing. Alexis thought, before turning to head back, only to bump into someone. Looking, Alexis's eyes widened when she saw Titan standing in front of her. You'll make the perfect hostage. Titan said smirking. Alexis could only get out a short scream, before Titan covered her mouth and nose with a cloth he doused in chloroform. Alexis struggled for a moment, before falling unconscious. Abandoned dorm. Looking around the abandoned dorm, Naruto looked around, frowning when he saw Egyptian hieroglyphics written on the walls, along with images of the Millennium items. This definitely involved the Shadow Games, maybe even connected to when Duel Monsters was originally played in Egypt. Naruto thought, while looking at the hieroglyphs. He then caught sight of a picture, showing an obelisk blue student. Grabbing it, Naruto could see that the guy had similar features to Alexis. This must be her brother. Naruto thought, before pocketing the picture to give it to Alexis. I wonder what they say. Blair wondered out, not being able to understand the glyphs. I can read them. Naruto revealed, surprising Blair and Cyrus, while Jaden nodded in agreement. I can actually read a little bit, too. Added Jaden, surprising the two even further. You too can read Egyptian hieroglyphs? Cyrus asked, shocked at learning this. Yeah, Yugi, his grandfather, and the Ishtar family taught me. Naruto answered. Given dual monsters connection to ancient Egypt, as well as all of their past adventures and experiences, they figured it'd be good for Naruto to know how to read hieroglyphs. My uncle's an archaeologist and taught me a little. Though I can't make out all of it. Replied Jaden. Huh, you know, now that think about it, we don't really know a whole lot about each other's families. Blair stated. Immediately, an awkward silence surrounded the four, realizing Blair was right. Cyrus's family was pretty good overall, with things just being tense between him and his brother. Jaden wasn't on really good terms with his parents, given they were always out working. And it didn't help when they started taking him to all those medical procedures for his nightmares, after he sent Yubel into outer space. Naruto simply didn't get a chance to meet his parents, given they had died the night he was born. Seeing this, Kyubi felt a little ashamed, since Naruto proved he wasn't like other humans by the way he treats his monsters and cares about his decks. Though while Minato and Kushina were already near death, due to Minato using the dead demon consuming seal and Kushina being a Jinchuriki, who had her tailed beast ripped out, the Kyubi's attack made it so they'd definitely die. Thankfully, the silence ended when Naruto read the hieroglyphs closely, only for his eyes widen in shock when he saw just what these were. What is it Naruto? Blair asked, after seeing his expression. These, these aren't just random hieroglyphs, they're instructions. Naruto said. Instructions? To what? Jaden asked, since he couldn't make out that part. Instructions on how to recreate the Millennium Items. Revealed Naruto, shocking the three at just what the hieroglyphs were. Recreating the Millennium Items, magical relics created during ancient Egypt. Cyrus. Naruto said, getting their attention, only to see Naruto clenching his hands and glaring at the wall. Yeah, yeah? Cyrus asked nervously, since he didn't think he's ever seen Naruto look this angry before. How many students are in obelisk blue, both girls and boys? Naruto asked, since his brother is in obelisk blue, confusing the three at the strange question. Uh, I'm not really sure. Maybe a couple dozen, close to or just over a hundred. Why? Cyrus asked. Because, one of the steps to creating the Millennium Items involves 99 human sacrifices. Naruto revealed gravely, granted they had to have evil souls, but he knew from experience that every rule had its exceptions, one just needed to know how to find it. 
This made them reel back in shock and horror. NI-99 essay sacrifices? Blair stuttered, looking pale and sick at hearing this. Boo but ifth that's tr true and th these in instructions and then the me missing students. Cyrus trailed off, looking sick at the thought that the missing students had been sacrificed by someone to recreate the millennium items. Let's not jump to conclusions just yet. If someone did recreate the millennium items, they likely would have used them by now. Said Naruto, knowing if someone did make their own millennium items, they wouldn't have waited this long to use their power. Pulling out his PDA, Naruto began taking several pictures of the writing on the wall, knowing he had to let Kaiba, and possibly Yugi and the others, know about this. But if whoever made those students disappear used them and others in a plan to create their own millennium items, then this was worse than he thought. Come on, let's see what else we can find. Naruto said, planning to search every inch of this place. He knew that in order to make the millennium items, a mold would be required, like the millennium stone used to make the originals. If someone was planning to recreate the items and already had a mold, Naruto planned to smash the thing into pieces. Walking further into the dorm, they soon arrived in what they guessed was a common area. Looking around, Naruto's attention was caught by seeing a dual monster's card on the ground. Going over, Naruto grabbed it, only to stiffen when he saw it was Itoil Cyber. This is Alexis's card. Naruto thought, worried of what this could mean for Alexis. The others walked over and saw the card, also worried when they recognized it belonged at Alexis. Just then, card glowed for a moment, reacting to Naruto's chakra, and Itoil Cyber appeared in front of them, though only Naruto and Jaden could see her. Itoil Cyber? Where's Alexis? Naruto asked, with the dual spirit pointing down a corridor, before flying down it. Come on, Alexis is in danger. Naruto said as they ran down the corridor. With Alexis. Groaning, Alexis slowly opened her eyes, only to see Titan stranding over her. She would have tried running only to see she was tied up and inside a coffin. Who are you? Why are you here? Alexis demanded, while glaring at Titan, refusing to show how much the situation scared her. I am Titan, the Shadow Duelist. And I was hired to deal with someone you're quite familiar with, and you're my leverage to make sure he plays along. Now fall into the Shadow Realm, Titan said with a smirk, while holding up his Millennium Pendant. Though before he could use it, he was stopped when Naruto, Blair, Cyrus, and Jaden came running in. Alexis. Naruto shouted when he saw her and glared at Titan. Seeing them, Alexis was relieved, knowing they'll be able to help her. But she was also worried as she realized just who Titan was meant to deal with and knew who hired him. Damn it, Growler. Alexis thought, not even bothering to use his nickname due to how serious the situation is, as this showed that Growler's grudge against Naruto was getting out of control if he's brought in a mercenary duelist, who is rumored to specialize in shadow games. Ah uh, Naruto Uzumaki. I've been waiting for you, if you wish to save your friend, you'll have to beat me in a shadow game. Titan declared, with Naruto glaring at the man, before scoffing. Yeah, how about no? Naruto said, before pulling out a flash bomb, having kept a few his ninja tools just in case, and threw it down, engulfing the area in a bright. With everyone blinded, Naruto used a substitution jutsu to switch with Alexis, before jumping back over to Jaden, Cyrus and Blair. When the light faded, Titan was surprised to see that Alexis was freed. Come, let's go. Naruto said, wanting to get his friends out of here, then he'll deal with Titan. Not so fast. Titan said, pulling out a grenade and throwing it at the entrance, stopping the others as the grenade exploded, blocking the exit and trapping them. Growler had informed him that Naruto was a tricky one, so he came prepared to force him to duel. Growling in anger, Naruto glared at Titan, seeing he wasn't going to quit until they dueled. All right, you Undertaker reject, you want to duel, then let's duel. Guys, see if you can dig us out of here, while I deal with this guy. Naruto said, 
with the others nodding and went to try and clear the exit. I hope you're prepared for the shadow games. Titan said, with Naruto scoffing as he put on his dual disc and inserted his darkness deck. Yeah, just get ready for some payback. Naruto said as they activated their dual discs and drew their hands. Let's duel. Naruto, 4000. Titan, 4000. Prepare yourself, for the shadows. I summon Infernal Queen Archfiend in ATK mode. Titan said, while summoning his monster. Infernal Queen Archfiend. Attribute, Fire. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Fiend. Effect, the controller of this card pays 500 life points during each of his, her standby phases, this is not optional. When this card is specifically designated as a target of the effect of a card controlled by your opponent, when resolving the effect, roll a six-sided die. If the result is two or five, negate the effect and destroy the opponent's card. As long as this card remains on the field, increase the ATK of all face-up Archfiend monsters by 1000 points. ATK slash 900 def slash 1500. And now because of my Infernal Queen's ability, it and every monster with Archfiend in its name gains 1000 ATK points. Titan said, as his monster's ATK power increased. Infernal Queen Archfiend, ATK slash 900 DEF slash 1500, ATK slash 1900 DEF slash 1500. Now I activate the field spell, Pandemonium. Titan said, inserting the field spell as the cavern transformed around them. Pandemonium. Card type, field spell. Effect. Neither player has to pay life points during the standby phase for Archfiend Monsters. Each time a player's Archfiend Monsters is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, except by battle, that player can add one Archfiend Monster from their deck to their hand that is a lower level than the destroyed card. With Pandemonium, I no longer have to pay life points to keep my Archfiends on the field. And if they're ever destroyed outside of battle, I get to add another Archfiend, with a lower level than the one destroyed, straight to my hand. Titan said gleefully, while Naruto growled at him. My move. Naruto said, while drawing a card and looking at his hand. Alright, first I'm summoning to the field, Armageddon Knight in ATK mode. Naruto said, summoning his monster, Armageddon Knight. Attribute, Dark. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. Effect, when this card is summoned, you can send one dark monster from your deck to the GY. ATK slash 1400 def slash 1200. And when he's summoned, I get to send a dark monster from my deck straight to the graveyard. Naruto said, while sending one monster to the graveyard. But why stop there, I activate the spell card Foolish Burial to send another monster from my deck to the graveyard. Naruto said, sending another dark monster to the graveyard. Foolish Burial. Card type, Normal Spell. Effect, send one monster from your deck to the GY. What's the matter? Are you so scared you've forgotten how to play the game? Titan said smirking. Just you wait. Naruto muttered. Now I activate the quick play spell, rush recklessly, and use it on my knight, increasing his ATK point by 700 for this turn. Naruto said, as his Armageddon knight grew stronger. Rush recklessly. Card type, quick play spell. Effect, target one face-up monster on the field, it gains 700 ATK until the end of this turn. Armageddon Knight, ATK slash 1400 DEF slash 1200, ATK slash 2100 DEF slash 1200. Now attack his Infernal Queen. Naruto commanded, with his knight rushing forward and slashing Infernal Queen, destroying her and damaging Titan's life points. Titan, 4000, 200 is equal to 3800. Now I set one card face down and end my turn. Naruto said, setting a card while his knight's ATK points return to normal. Armageddon Knight, 
ATK slash 2100 DEF slash 1200, ATK slash 1400 DEF slash 1200. TSK, you may have destroyed my infernal queen, but that still won't save you from the shadows. Titan declared, while drawing a card. I play the spell card, Monster Reborn, bringing back my infernal queen Archfiend. Said Titan as his infernal queen reappeared. Monster Reborn. Card type, normal spell. Effect, target one monster in either GY, special summon it. And with Infernal Queen back, I get to summon Terror King Archfiend. Titan declared, while summoning his second monster. Terror King Archfiend. Attribute, Dark. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Fiend. Effect, You cannot Normal Summon or Flip Summon this card, unless you have an Archfiend Monster card on your side of the field. The controller of this card pays 800 life points during each of his, her standby phases, this is not optional. When this card is specifically designated as a target of the effect of a card controlled by your opponent, when resolving the effect, roll a six-sided die. If the result is two or five, negate the effect and destroy the opponent's card. Also negate the effect of an effect monster that is destroyed by this monster in battle. ATK slash 2000 def slash 1500. And because of Infernal Queen's ability, he gains a 1000 ATK points as well. Terror King Archfiend, ATK slash 2000 DEF slash 1500, ATK slash 3000 DEF slash 1500. I don't think so. I activate my face down card, Dark Lord Rebellion. Naruto said, as his face down revealed itself. Dark Lord Rebellion. Card type, Normal Trap. Effect, send one Dark Lord monster from your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard, destroy one card on the field. You can only activate one Dark Lord Rebellion per turn. Now by sending Dark Lord Zerato from my hand to the graveyard, I get to destroy one card on the field, and I choose your Terror King. Naruto said, while sending Zerato to the graveyard. Not so, fast I activate Terra King's ability. When he's targeted by the effect of card you control, I get a gambling chance to keep him. A number from 1 through 6 is selected at random, and if it happens to be a 2 or a 5 I get to keep him, while your trap is destroyed. Now let's see what fate decides. Titan said, as 6 orbs rose out of the central lava pit, each numbered 1 through 6, and floated over Titan's hand. The one orb lit up as a flame went around the orbs, before finally stopping on six, making Naruto smirk. Looks like Terror King Archfiend is going bye-bye. Naruto said, as an image of Dark Lord Zerato flew out of his graveyard and slashed through Terror King Archfiend, destroying it. Grr, it doesn't matter as now Pandemonium's effect activates letting me add a fiend monster from my deck to my hand. Titan said, while adding a fiend monster to his hand. And I still have my Infernal Queen on the field, and I'll use her to send Armageddon Knight straight to the shadows. Go now Infernal Queen. Titan commanded. Infernal Queen Archfiend shriek, before charging forward and destroying Armageddon Knight. Naruto, 4500 is equal to 3500. And that's not all, because now, the shadow games truly begin. Titan said while pulling out his Millennium Pendant, shocking Naruto. How do you have the Millennium Puzzle? Demanded Naruto, as from what Yugi told him, the Pharaoh had taken the puzzle with him back to the afterlife, after returning to help defeat Egami, and yet Titan has it now. Unless, could it be one of the Millennium items that someone is trying to recreate? But does that mean the other items were recreated as well? Or is Titan's just a prototype of sorts? I don't know this puzzle you speak of, but this Millennium Pendant is the last thing you'll ever see as you fall into the Shadow Realm. Titan said, while hiding his confusion of what Naruto said. Naruto, that pendant is a fake. Mana said, while appearing beside him. What, a fake? Naruto asked, with Mana nodding. 
Yes, I'd recognize a true millennium item from my time with Yugi and the Pharaoh, as well as my original owner in ancient Egypt. And that's nothing but a fake. Mana said, while glaring at Titan given how much the millennium puzzle meant to Yugi, Adam and her original summoner, and the namesake of her nickname, Mana. Naruto was relieved that the Millennium items weren't already remade. Though he was still angry at Titan, not only for kidnapping Alexis, but for pretending to be a shadow duelist and messing with things that he shouldn't be. Alright, my move. Naruto said, drawing a card and smirked at seeing what he had drawn. Alright first I activate Dark Eruption to bring Armageddon Knight from the graveyard back to my hand. Naruto said as Armageddon Knight returned to his hand. Dark Eruption. Card Type, Normal Spell. Effect, Target one Dark Monster with 1500 or less ATK in your graveyard, add that target to your hand. Now I'll summon him back to the field. And since I have three Dark Monsters in my graveyard, I can special summon my ultimate monster, Rise Dark Armed Dragon. Naruto said, while summoning his Armageddon Knight and the large black and silver dragon, which roared as it took the field. Dark Armed Dragon. Attribute, Dark. Level, 7, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Dragon. Effect, Cannot be Normal Summoned Slash Set. Must be Special Summoned, from your hand, by having exactly 3 Dark Monsters in your GY. You can banish 1 Dark Monster from your GY, then target 1 card on the field, destroy that target. ATK slash 2800 def slash 1000. What? Titan said, shocked at seeing such a powerful monster, one far stronger than his infernal queen. And that's the end, because I'm using Dark Arm Dragon's ability. You see, if I banish a dark monster from my graveyard, I get to destroy a card on a field, and I have three while you only have two cards. So, I banish one monster and destroy Pandemonium. Naruto said, banishing a monster as Dark Armed Dragon unleashed a sonic roar which destroyed Pandemonium, returning the cavern to normal. But why stop there, I discard another card and destroy your Infernal Queen. Said Naruto banishing another monster as Dark Armed Dragon charged forward and destroyed Infernal Queen Archfiend. My my monster. Titan said as he now had no cards on the field. That's right, you're done Titan. Naruto said, as Titan quickly pulled out his Millennium Pendant. Not so fast. You may have destroyed my monster and field spell, but you haven't destroyed this. Titan said, holding it up in an attempt to regain control of the duel. Oh give it a rest. That's nothing but a cheap knockoff, and we both know it. Naruto said, getting everyone's attention. Cheap knockoff? Blair asked. Yeah, that isn't a millennium item, this isn't even a real shadow game, just some out of work carny thinking he's tough. Said Naruto. I'm not out of work. I could get my job back at the fair, if I wanted to. Titan said without thinking. Thanks for proving my point. Now Dark Armed Dragon, attack him directly. Naruto commanded, as his dragon roared out a beam of dark energy, knocking Titan back and taking out most of his life points. Titan, 3800, 2800 is equal to 1000. Gah! Titan screamed in pain from the attack, before standing up. That's it, I'm out of here, see you never punks. Titan said, throwing his pendant down, creating a cloud of smoke due to it having a built-in smoke bomb. Hey dumbass, you forgot that you trapped us in here, remember? Naruto said, making Titan freeze in realization. Suddenly, the statues in the cavern lit up and shot out beams of light, while a large eye of Jajit appeared on the floor. Oh no! Naruto said, with his eyes widening, before wind and shadows began swirling around him and Titan. Naruto. Blair, Alexis, Cyrus, and Jaden shouted at seeing their friend about to be trapped by what they thought was another of Titan's tricks and ran to help him. No, stay back. Naruto exclaimed. 
but it was too late as the darkness rose up and surrounded them, with everyone finding themselves surrounded by swirling black and purple energy. What the, what is this place? Where am I? Titan said, while freaking out. What are you talking about, enough of the tricks? Jaden said, thinking this was another of Titan's tricks. Jaden, this isn't a trick, this is real. See? Naruto said, while pointing at the now solid mana, with Alexis, Blair, and Cyrus being surprised that they could see her. Just then, several black slime creatures fell from the ceiling and began attacking Titan. A.H. No, get them off me, please help. Titan begged, before a glowing green orb tried forcing its way into his mouth. More creatures tried attacking Naruto and his friends, but a roar from Dark Armed Dragon had them back away from Naruto, while Winged Kiribo, Dark Magician Girl, and more of Naruto's spirits surrounded his friends. Thanks guys. Naruto said, relieved that his dual spirits were here to help. Whoa, real dual monsters. Alexis said in amazement. Looking back at Titan, Naruto saw that he now had glowing red eyes. Just great. Naruto muttered. Naruto Uzumaki, the shadows demand a payment, only one will leave this duel alive. Titan said. Then it's a good thing I'm ending this duel now. Armageddon Knight, wipe out the rest of his life points. Naruto said, as Armageddon Knight charged forward and swung his sword at Titan, destroying the last of his life points. Titan, 1000. 1400 is equal to minus 400. No. Titan screamed, before he was consumed by the shadow creatures. You idiot. Naruto thought, knowing this was Titan's punishment for angering the real shadow realm with his fake shadow games. Come on, we need to get out of here. Naruto said to his friends, doubting the shadow creatures will just let them leave. Winged Kiribo got everyone's attention and pointed to a light shining in the darkness. Good job Winged Kiribo, let's go. Jaden said, more than eager to get out of here. Though before they could run to the exit, they were stopped when they saw a figure moving in the shadows towards them. That's not good. Naruto thought, while getting ready for a fight. Actually, the only one escaping this realm is me. After the pharaoh and my other half sentenced me to this accursed place, I now have my chance at freedom. Said the figure in a twisted voice as they stepped into view, making everyone gasp in shock at who it was. Hello, binky boys. Th that's, that's Merrick. Syrah said in fear at seeing the runner up in the Battle City tournament and former owner of the winged dragon of R8 no, that's not the real Merrick, that's his dark half. Naruto stated, as Yami Merrick laughed wickedly. Correct boy, and if you know that, then you're obviously acquainted with the pharaoh and my weaker side. I'll be sure to let them know you're trapped here, before sending them to join you. Yami Merrick said, before activating his dual disc and summoning several monsters. Rise Drillago, Legendary Fiend, Lava Golem, Makura the Destroyer, and Lord Poison. Keep those monsters busy it's time I took back my freedom. Merrick said, while sending his monsters to fight Naruto's. Not so fast. Dark Horus, Red Ice Black Dragon destroy Merrick's monster. Naruto said, while summoning his two dragons. Roaring, Dark Horus and Red Ice unleashed a combo fire blast, destroying Merrick's monsters and halting his advance. Let's go, now. Naruto said as he, his friends, the dual spirits ran for the exit. No. Merrick screamed, running to the exit, only for it to close before he could get through. Asterisk, abandoned dorm, asterisk. Naruto and the others fell out of the shadow realm in a large pile, before they got up. Seeing the exit was still blocked, Naruto cursed, knowing he had to get them out of there. Forming a Rasengan, much to the shock of the others, Naruto slammed it into the rubble, clearing the path. How did you dash, Blair started saying. I'll explain later, let's get out of here first. Naruto said, not wanting to risk them getting dragged back into the Shadow Realm, especially with Yami Merrick there waiting for them. 
Nodding the agreement, they all ran out of the abandoned dorm. Later. After exiting the dorm, with Naruto planning to send what he learned to Kaiba, he had told his friends about where he was from, his abilities, and how he arrived here. That is so cool. Jaden said, amazed and excited to learn that Naruto was a ninja from another world. Are you kidding me? So you really were in two places at once? That's the reason why Alexis, Jasmine, and Mindy didn't believe me about the letter, and why I thought I was going crazy. Syra said in annoyance, while also being relieved that he knew he wasn't crazy. Ehe, sorry. Naruto said sheepishly, since he didn't think leaving a shadow clone in the locker room would result in that happening. Well I thought it was funny. Said Mana as she appeared and hugged Naruto affectionately, though Cyrus, Alexis, and Blair were surprised that they could still see her. Hey, we can still see you. Blair said in surprise. Really? Asked Naruto. Oh yeah, given their time in the Shadow Realm, they'll be able to see dual spirits now. Mana revealed, much to their surprise. Huh, that's, interesting. Alexis muttered not sure what else to say after all the things they just saw. Looking, Naruto was surprised to see the sun coming up, showing just how long they were down there. Though he also remembered the picture he found, along with Itoil Cyber. Oh yeah, Alexis, I found your card, along with this picture. Naruto said handing both to Alexis who nodded gratefully at having Itoil Cyber back. Though when she saw the picture was of her brother, she was surprised and looked at Naruto, who smiled at her. I promise Alexis, I will help you find out what happened to your brother. Naruto swore, much to her joy, before she hugged him. Thank you, both for this and for saving me, again. Said Alexis, before pulling back. Like I said, I'll always save you if you need me though I think we should be getting back to our dorms now. Naruto suggested, with the others nodding in agreement. Though before Blair and Alexis could start walking, Mana grabbed them both and pulled them aside. Just to make it clear to both of you, I won't lose to either of you. I've known and been with Naruto longer, and I don't plan on losing him any time soon. Mana said, before vanishing, leaving the two confused girls behind. Uh, what did she mean? Blair asked, with Alexis shaking her head, not sure of what to make of it. She made it sound like they like Naruto or something. But that can't be true, they haven't known each other very long and they couldn't like him that much already, could they? Early in the morning, a truck filled with black-clad troopers drove up to the Slifer Red Dorm. Stopping just outside of the dorm, troopers jumped out of the truck and immediately began marching up the stairs, creating a lot of noise which resulted in Professor Banner being woken. Oh whoever is making the racket, they're making me so, huh? Banner said before stopping short, when he saw just who it was and immediately ran back into his room. A.H. The U.S. government, they've finally found me. Quick Pharaoh, to the secret tunnel. Banner screamed, believing the United States government has finally tracked him down. Though in truth, this was the Dual Academy Disciplinary Squad and they were going up to Jaden and Cyrus's room, along with Naruto and Blair's room. Jaden and Cyrus were woken up when their door was suddenly broken open by the Disciplinary Squad, the same happening with Naruto and Blair's door. Though thankfully, Blair was wearing a nightcap to hide her hair, having learned her lesson the night before, when Banner suddenly popped up. Just in case someone else suddenly pops in, unexpectedly. Oi, what's the big idea? Naruto demanded, annoyed at being woken up like this and at them suddenly just barging into their room. Quiet you. Naruto Uzumaki, Blair Flanagan, you two along with Jaden Yuki and Cyrus Truesdale are under campus arrest. Said a squad member. What for? Blair questioned. That will be made clear at the interrogation, let's go. Asterisk later, asterisk. After being allowed to get dressed, Naruto, Blair, Jaden, and Cyrus had been escorted to Chancellor Shepard's office, where the rest of the staff, except Banner, was waiting for them. Where's Professor Banner? 
Shepard asked, not seeing the Slifer dorm head present. He thought the U.S. government found him and that we sent the disciplinary squad to detain him for them. Answered Professor Sarder, the head of the R.A. Yellow Dorm, with a deadpan expression. This caused everyone in the room, including the students, to facepalm in disbelief. Though they were also thankful that this didn't result in Banner hulking out, again. Well, there's no use waiting, but after this meeting we'll have to send someone to get him. Any volunteers? Shepard asked. Not it. Said most the teachers. Not I and O. Growler said in horror, knowing that he had to go clear things up with Banner. All right, mid-boss will go clear things up with Banner, once we're done here. Shepard said in relief that he wasn't the one that had to do it. Oh come on. All right, now you four have been charged with illegally entering the abandoned dorm after hours, which is strictly forbidden for students to go near. Do you have anything to say for yourselves? Shepard asked seriously, since he might be light-hearted on most matters, but when it came to the abandoned dorm, he made it completely clear it was off-limits. He didn't want any more students vanishing. Yeah, I have this pass allowing me access to the entire island, including the abandoned dorm. It was given to me by Sido Kaiba, when he asked me to investigate some of the strange happenings going on at Dual Academy. Including investigating the abandoned dorm and what happened to the missing students. Naruto said, pulling out the pass Kaiba had given him, should something like this happen, to make sure he didn't get in trouble if he was found somewhere that he shouldn't be. That's obviously a fake. There's no way Mr. Kaiba could trust him to look into these matters. Growler said, not believing Kaiba would entrust this delinquent with such important matters. Actually it is real, and I do trust Naruto to find out what happened to those students. Someone said as the door opened with everyone, besides Naruto, being shocked and amazed to see Sido Kaiba and Yugi Muto themselves enter the office, with Alexis also following behind them. She had originally been on her way after hearing what happened and to defend her friends, while being shocked to see Kaiba and Yugi also heading to the Chancellor's office. While Kaiba and Yugi had received the information Naruto had learned, including the instructions of recreating the Millennium Items. That is what had them both take the former's Blue Eyes White Dragon Jet to Duel Academy, as this was something that had to be dealt with personally. Kaiba's right, Naruto was trusted with finding out what happened in the abandoned dorm, and our trust wasn't misplaced. Yugi said with a grave expression that he had been sporting since learning just what could have happened at the abandoned dorm. It had already been bad if those students had been involved in the shadow games. But if one of them, or someone else, had been planning to recreate the Millennium Items, then it's even worse. Chancellor, Professors, I was also at the abandoned dorm and saw Naruto, Jaden, Cyrus, and Blair, with Naruto also telling me he was allowed there. Though I didn't go in and plan to head back to my dorm when I was kidnapped by Titan, a fake shadow duelist. He planned to use me as a hostage to force Naruto to duel him a shadow game, but Naruto was able to save me. But before we could escape, Titan destroyed the entrance, forcing Naruto to duel him. Alexis added, while showing them a recording she took of Naruto and Titan's duel, though it cut out when they were pulled into the Shadow Realm. She figured Growler would try something like this, in case Titan failed to scare Naruto away, so she made sure to have evidence. Unfortunately though, she couldn't record anything that could have been used as evidence that Growler was the one who hired Titan. Well Alexis, that doesn't answer why you were at the abandoned dorm. Care to explain? Miss Fontaine asked sternly, with Alexis looking reluctant to answer. I was, I've, I've been going to the abandoned dorm almost every night, to pay tribute to my brother. Alexis answered, with the professors and chancellor nodding in understanding. Well, I can understand your reason Alexis, it was still very dangerous to go out at night like that. Especially at the abandoned dorm, even if you hadn't actually gone in there, until last night. You're lucky Naruto and the others were there to save you from Titan. Shepard said, before turning to Kaiba and Yugi. And thank you, Mr. Kaiba, for helping clear this matter up. 
You have my word that Naruto will have no more interferences in his investigations. Said Shepard, with Kaiba nodding tersely. Damn it. That brat's basically untouchable now. Growler thought, knowing that with this, he has zero chance of getting Naruto expelled, unless he does something really bad. Though that gave Growler pause. While he couldn't do anything to Naruto because of his pass, his friends on the other hand had no such protection. Uh, Chancellor while it's true Naruto has access to all the island's location, Jaden, Cyrus, Blair, and Alexis were still trespassing. With Ms. Rhodes admitting that she had most likely been doing it since she first came to Academy Island, despite her not actually entering the abandoned dorm until she was kidnapped by Titan. And what kind of example would we be setting if we let them all off the hook? So instead, how about we give them a chance? With all four of them participating in tag duels, Jaden partnered with Cyrus and Alexis partnered with Blair. Both teams going against duelists that I will personally choose as their opponents. If they win their duels, they're free to go. But if they lose, they'll be expelled. Growler said. While he didn't like the idea of including one of his obelisks, especially a talented one like Alexis, he couldn't appear to be biased. And this way, he can still get to Naruto by getting most of his friends expelled. A tag duel? Sweet, I'm game. Jaden said, excited at the idea of dueling alongside Cyrus, while Cyrus didn't look that excited. That seems fair. Alexis said, with Blair nodding in agreement. Though the staff, along with Kaiba and Yugi, didn't like it. But none of them could dispute Growler's point, unfortunately. Especially considering that Kaiba hadn't included access to anyone that Naruto would have invited to help in his investigations, given with his abilities he could handle any threats he encounters, himself. Naruto especially wasn't happy, since he knew that Growler was doing this to get back at him though he smirked as he got an idea. Okay, since my friends are up for tag duels, I am too. But given that they'll be expelled if they lose, I propose that if they win, not only do they get to stay, but Growler has to legally change his name to mid-boss. Naruto said, much to Growler's anger. Wh what how dare you dash? I'll allow it. Kaiba cut in with a smirk. Growler's jaw dropped in shock knowing he couldn't make any further protests if Kaiba was agreeing to Naruto's stipulation. Very well. The tag teams of Jaden and Cyrus and Alexis and Blair will participate in tag duels of Growler's choosing, if they lose, they'll be expelled, but if they win, they get to stay at Duel Academy and Growler will have to change his name to Midboss. Shepard said. With that, everyone exited the office. Sorry we can't do anything to help your friends, Naruto. Yugi said, with Kaiba nodding as it seems like they have a lot of potential as duelists. He may have gained full ownership the school after Kajimara left, but he couldn't offer immunity to certain students. It's fine. Besides, I have faith that my friends will be able to beat what duelists mid-boss throws at them. Naruto said, while seeing that Blair, Alexis, and Jaden were confident they would win, but he noticed Cyrus didn't seem so sure. Tell us about the abandoned dorm, what else did you find besides those hieroglyphs? Kaiba asked, wanting to know everything that happened there, and what else that Naruto found out. Well, I can't say for sure what happened to the missing students, but it was obvious that one of them might have been messing with things they shouldn't have. As while Titan wasn't a real shadow duelist, we had all been pulled into the shadow realm at the end of the duel, where he was possessed. We managed to escape, but not before we ran into Merrick's evil half. Naruto revealed, with Yugi and Kaiba looking at him surprised. Merrick's other half? Yugi asked, worried that he might have escaped. Yeah, he tried to escape and leave us trapped in there, but I was able to stop him. Still, whatever happened there, it created a powerful connection to the Shadow Realm. But one thing that bugs me is this, how did someone figure out the spell to recreate the Millennium Items? Naruto asked, given how the knowledge of such a spell should be lost. Yugi and Kaiba nodded in agreement to that. It was more worrying, 
since they don't know who it was that learned how to create the Millennium items, as well as what else would this mystery person could know. Their instinct would be to destroy the abandoned dorm and prevent anyone else from deciphering the instructions. But who knows if it isn't written somewhere else, and if destroying the dorm would just let this person know that they're onto them. For now, the best thing, in fact the only thing they could do was search the abandoned dorm for anything else. On the way back to the Slifer Red Dorm, they ran into Chumley and Bastion, the two RA Yellows also shocked when they saw Yugi and Kaiba. Hey guys. Chumley are you feeling better? Naruto asked, given Chumley had been supposed to join them, when they were telling scary stories, but had gotten food poisoning when a sandwich he got from Sandwich Day didn't agree with him. Yeah, much better. We just heard what happened, are you guys being expelled? Chumley asked, worried that his friends would be kicked out of the academy. Naruto shook his head and explained what happened, with his fellow Ras being surprised that he was, indirectly, working for Sido Kaiba. As well as that Jaden, Cyrus, Blair and Alexis have to take part in tag duels, if they want to stay at the academy. They soon arrived at the Slifer dorm, with Yugi giving Kaiba dry look, knowing exactly why it was made that way. You just couldn't resist, could you? Yugi stated, with Kaiba covering his embarrassment with a cough, while looking anywhere but his rival and the students. Shut up. Kaiba muttered, since the designs of the dorms was one of the very few things he was involved with, when making the academy. Thankfully, the awkward moment ended not a moment later, when Growler came running out of the dorm, screaming, with Hulk Banner crashing through the wall and chasing after him. The students didn't even blink at the sight, having gotten used to it, while Yugi and Kaiba looked on with wide eyes. Does, does that happen often? Yugi asked, while looking at Naruto, as Kaiba now realized why he's always getting so many bills for repairing the Slifer dorm. Eh, at most two times a day. We've gotten pretty good at what we say around him, but usually something always sets him off. We're just lucky the entire dorm hasn't come crashing down on us. Said Naruto, with him and the Slifers looking at Kaiba. Alright. I'll have the Slifer dorm renovated after this school year. Kaiba relented. Along with having gotten Naruto's suggestion of adding girl dorms for Slifer Red and RA Yellow to better rank the girls, rather than just putting them in obelisk. Hey Alexis, since we're going to be tag partners, do you want a duel to better work on strategies and learn about each other's decks? Blair asked. Yeah, that sounds good. Alexis replied smiling, along with being curious of what type of deck Blair used. Besides, she managed to get some new rare cards from the last shipment and was eager to test them out. Great idea. How about we duel against each other too? Sigh. Jaden suggested. Rewrite. Cyrus muttered. With that decided, Blair and Alexis retrieved their dual discs and stood across from each other, while the others watched. Yugi and Kaiba were also interested to see how good they were. Duel. Blair, 4000. Alexis, 4000. All right, I'll start. Alexis said, while drawing a card. First I play Pot of Greed to draw two cards. Pot of Greed. Card type, normal spell. Effect, draw two cards from your deck. Now I activate the ritual spell card, Machine Angel Ritual. Alexis said, as a large burning torch appeared behind her. Machine Angel Ritual. Card Type, Ritual Spell. Effect, this card can be used to ritual summon any, Cyber Angel, Ritual Monster. You must also tribute monsters from your hand or field whose total levels exactly equal the level of the ritual monster you ritual summon. Now I tribute the level 2 Cyber Petit Angel and level 3 Cyber Tutu to ritual summon, Cyber Angel Natasha. Alexis said, while summoning her new Cyber Angel monster. Cyber Angel Natasha. Attribute, Light. Level, 5, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Fairy Slash Ritual. Effect, you can ritual summon this card with, Machine Angel Ritual. Once per turn, 
you can target one face-up monster you control, gain LP equal to half its ATK. When a ritual monster you control is targeted for an attack, you can negate the attack. If this card is in the graveyard, you can banish one other Cyber Angel monster from your graveyard, then target one monster your opponent controls, special summon this card, and if you do, take control of that monster. ATK slash 1000 def slash 1000. Now I equip my Natasha with Ritual Weapon, increasing her ATK in def by 1500. Alexis said, as the weapon appeared on her monster and her power increased. Ritual Weapon. Card Type, Equip Spell. Effect, Equip only to a level 6 or lower Ritual Monster. It gains 1500 ATK and DEF. Cyber Angel Natasha, ATK slash 1000 DEF slash 1000, ATK slash 2500 DEF slash 2500. And with that, I set a face down and end my turn. Alexis said, putting one card face down. Alright, my turn. Said Blair, while drawing a card. I'll start by activating the field spell, Magical Meltdown. Blair said, as the field changed around them. Magical Meltdown. Card Type, Field Spell. Effect, when this card is activated, you can add one, Alistair the Invoker, from your deck to your hand. The activation of your cards and effects that include an effect that fusion summons a fusion monster cannot be negated, also your opponent's cards and effects cannot activate when a monster is fusion summoned this way. You can only activate one, Magical Meltdown, per turn. With this out, I get to add Alistair the Invoker from my deck to my hand, and with him I'll use the spell card polymerization to fuse Alistair with my Laundry Dragon Maid to fusion summon. Invoked Cositis in DEF mode. Blair said, as her two monsters appeared and fused together into the large water dragon. Polymerization. Card type, normal spell. Effect, fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or your side of the field as fusion materials. Invoked Cositis. Attribute, Water. Level, 6, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Dragon Slash Fusion. Effect, Cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. This card can attack while in face-up defense position. If it does, apply its ATK for damage calculation. ATK slash 1800 def slash 2900. And with that, I end my turn. Blair said, since she didn't have anything else to play. Okay I draw, and I'll start by playing card of sanctity. Said Alexis, as she and Blair each drew until they had six cards again. Card of sanctity. Card type, normal spell. Effect, each player draws until they have six cards in their hand. Now I play Mystical Space Typhoon, destroying Magical Meltdown. Said Alexis, as a Typhoon returned the field to normal. Mystical Space Typhoon. Card type, normal spell. Effect, destroy one spell or trap card on the field. Next I'll summon Itoil Cyber in ATK mode. Alexis said, while summoning her monster. Itoil Cyber. Attribute, Earth. Level, 4, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior. Effect, each time this card attacks your opponent directly, it gains 600 ATK, during the damage step only. ATK slash 1200 def slash 1600. And I'll equip her with the spell card, Angel Wing. Said Alexis, as white angel wings emerged from Itoil Cyber's back. Angel Wing. Card Type, Equip Spell. Effect, when the equipped monster inflicts battle damage to your opponent, inflict 300 damage to your opponent. When this face-up card is sent to the graveyard, draw one card. I end my turn. Alexis said. Right, I draw. Said Blair before looking at the card she drew. I summon Kitchen Dragon Maid in ATK mode. Blair said, while summoning the Redhead Dragon Maid. 
Kitchen Dragon Maid. Attribute, Fire. Level, 3, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Dragon. Effect, If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Dragon Maid monster from your deck to your hand, except Kitchen Dragon Maid, then send one Dragon Maid monster from your hand to the GY. At the start of the battle phase, you can return this card to the hand, and if you do, special summon one level 8 Dragon Maid monster from your hand or GY. You can only use each effect of Kitchen Dragon Maid once per turn. ATK slash 500 def slash 1700. And with her ability, I can add one Dragon Maid monster from my deck to my hand, but I have to send one Dragon Maid monster to the graveyard. Blair said, while adding a Dragon Maid monster to her hand, while sending another to the grave. Now I use my Dragon Maid's other ability to return her to my hand and special summon a level 8 Dragon Maid from my graveyard, and I choose Dragon Maid Tinkhek. Said Blair, as her Dragon Maid transformed into a large red dragon. Dragon Maid Tinkhek. Attribute, Fire. Level, 8, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Dragon. Effect, Cannot be destroyed by card effects while you control a fusion monster. You can only use each of the following effects of Dragon Maid Tinkhek once per turn. Quick Effect You can discard this card, then target one Dragon Maid monster you control, it gains 2000 ATK until the end of this turn. At the end of the battle phase, you can return this card to the hand, and if you do, special summon one level 3 Dragon Maid monster from your hand. ATK slash 2700 def slash 1700. Now Tinkek, attack Cyber Angel Natasha. Blair said, with her dragon roaring and breathing fire at Natasha. I activate Natasha's ability. When a ritual monster I control is attacked, I can negate it. Alexis said, as Natasha dodged the flames. Well you're not the only who can use monster effects, Mycositis has one of his own. Because he's in face-up death mode, he can still attack. Go Cositis, destroy Itoil Cyber. Said Blair, with Cositis roaring as he unleashed a stream of high-pressure water. I activate my face down doble passe changing your attack from my cyber to me. Alexis said, activating her trap card, while gritting her teeth as the attack hits her. Doble passe. Card type, normal trap. Effect, activate when your opponent attacks a face-up attack position monster you control. It becomes a direct attack. Then, the monster originally selected as the attack target attacks your opponent directly. Alexis, 4000, 1800 is equal to 2200. And now my Itoil Cyber attacks you directly, boosting her ATK points by 600. And thanks to Angel Wing, you take an extra 300 points of damage. Alexis said, as Itoil Cyber skated forward, while gaining a temporary boost in power. Itoil Cyber, ATK slash 1200 DEF slash 1600, ATK slash 1800 DEF slash 1600. Blair grunted in pain as Itoil Cyber delivered a kick to her, lowering her life points, while Angel Wing also took effect. Blair, 4000, 2100 is equal to 1900. Blair groaned at losing more than half her life points, while her Tinkhek also returned to her hand and Kitchen Dragon Maid returned. I activate the Stamping Destruction to destroy Ritual Weapon and inflict 500 points of damage to you. Blair said, as Cyber Angel Natasha's ATK and Def returned to normal, while Alexis's life points went down a little. Cyber Angel Natasha, ATK slash 2500 DEF slash 2500, ATK slash 1000 DEF slash 1000. Alexis, 2200, 500 is equal to 1700. And with that, I place one card face down and end my turn. Said Blair, while putting a card face down. Okay, I draw. Alexis said. And I activate my face down, Castle of Dragon Souls. Blair said, activating her trap card as a large castle appeared behind her, with numerous dragons flying around it. 
Castle of Dragon Souls. Card Type, Continuous Trap. Effect, Once per turn, you can Bonnie, SH, one Dragon Monster from your GY, then target one monster you control, it gains 780k until the end of this turn, even if this card leaves the field. When this face-up card on the field is sent to the GY, you can target one of your banished dragon monsters, special summon that target. You can only control one, Castle of Dragon Souls. Now by banishing a dragon monster from my graveyard, I can target one monster I control, and it gains 780k points for the rest of this turn, and I choose Kitchen Dragon Maid. Blair said, removing one of the dragon monsters in her graveyard from play, while Kitchen Dragon Maid's ATK points went up. Kitchen Dragon Maid, ATK slash 500 DEF slash 1700, ATK slash 1200 DEF slash 1700. Seeing the move made Alexis smirk, as now she couldn't attack with both of Blair's monsters either having equal or more ATK than her Etoile Cyber. But looking at her hand and the card she drew, Alexis smiled at Blair. Blair, I have to admit, you put up a great fight and almost had me beat, and I couldn't have asked for a better tag partner. Now I activate polymerization, fusing my Etoile Cyber on the field and the Blade Skater in my hand, to fusion summon Cyber Blader. Alexis said, as both her monsters fuse together, Cyber Blader. Attribute, Earth. Level, 7, Card Type, Effect Monster. Monster Type, Warrior Slash Fusion. Effect, while your opponent controls only one monster, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. While your opponent controls only two monsters, double this card's ATK. While your opponent controls only three monsters, negate the effects of your opponent's spell, trap, and effect monsters. ATK slash 2100 def slash 800. And thanks of her ability, because you have two monsters on the field, her ATK points are doubled. Alexis said, as Blair's eyes widened, realizing what that meant. Cyberblader, ATK slash 2100 DEF slash 800, ATK slash 4200 DEF slash 800. Now Cyberblader, attack Kitchen Dragon Maid with Whirlwind Rage. Alexis said as Cyberblader spun around towards Kitchen Dragon Maid, delivering a kick that destroyed her and the last of Blair's life points. Blair, 1900 to 300 equals minus 1100. Oh man. Blair said, saddened at her loss. Don't take it too hard Blair, like I said, you almost had me. And I meant it when I said that I couldn't ask for a better tag partner. Alexis said smiling and holding out her hand, which Blair shook, while sporting a smile of her own, not letting the loss get to her. In fact, it'll just push her to get stronger for the next duel. Oh man, that was a sweet duel. Let's go Sai, it's our turn. Jaden said in excitement, after watching Alexis and Blair. Rewrite. Cyrus muttered, as they took Blair and Alexis's place, and began their duel. That was really great Blair, you also have a pretty good deck, mixing dragon maids and invokers. Naruto said, with Blair smiling at the compliment. Thanks, I figured it'd be good to have the invoker fusion monsters as well, given that dragon maids have all the different attributes, so if I use them to fusion summon an invoker, I can rotate them into the graveyard and back into my hand, thanks to the human dragon maid's abilities. Said Blair. Yugi and Kaiba both nodded in approval at the solid strategy, along with the duel, as both of them can tell that Alexis and Blair had a lot of potential to become pro-duelists. Though watching Jaden and Cyrus's duel, they all couldn't help but frown at seeing Cyrus hesitating on his turns, while looking unsure of himself. Even more worrying is when he froze up, when he drew a card. What was that card? Naruto wondered, just as Jaden won the duel with Thunder Giant. Power Bond? Why didn't you use it? Jaden asked, when he saw what card Cyrus had drawn. You could have doubled Steam Gyroid's ATK points and won, even more you had limiter removal to double them again, and flattened anything I had. Though for my sake, I'm glad you didn't. Said Jaden, 
seeing that Cyrus could have made Steam Gyroid stronger than any monster in his deck. You don't get it, Jaden. Zane said I'm not good enough to use that card, and I'll probably never be. Cyrus said, while snatching his cards back from Jaden, and running off before anyone could stop him. Zane? Kaiba asked, while frowning. Cyrus's brother, he's an obelisk blue and the top duelist here. Alexis answered. That made them all frown, while wondering what Zane could have said to Cyrus to make him believe he didn't deserve to use power bond and develop such confidence issues. Especially Blair, with her already fading crush on Zane being knocked down a couple pegs. Well I don't care if Zane is the top duelist here, I'm going to duel him and show him that Cyrus is a great duelist. Jaden swore, making the others smile at Jaden's determination to help Cyrus.